Hello, everybody. I think I'm about ready to get started. Let's shout a little bit. I guess we'll see who's around. But I think for the most part, we're going to be doing a mix of, uh... Probably, probably all the episodes. I don't think we're going to focus one episode in particular. Eventually, it'll be TTF. But we'll do some warm-up runs, see how things go. You're doing well. Figured while we wait for people to trickle in, we just do a couple of joke runs, more or less. I'm gonna try one thing to test what Murphy has for later. Under Monster Reader. I'm going to move the accuracy threshold in case it's literally counting 80%. We're talking about that at the end of the prior stream. Because I do want to actually see 80%. If it's actually hiding 80%, that makes me a little sad. I like how I can just normal, normal, normal him. That's so dumb. I love it. Fine, I'll actually kill him. Bonk. <laughs> One thing I never said about S Reds. Why is it so inconsistent with the buffs? People were asking me before about quality of life changes. Can S friends just always double buff? Why does it miss? <laughs> I would love to know why. There we go. Feature features that won't matter in meta <laughs> of uh, PSO. Please fix S red buff range. a couple boxes. I was kind of messing around shooting him and I'm like, uh, I don't think I hit all the boxes while I was messing around. Let's see if this combo kills. Yeah, there we go. Good call from chat earlier. You know, you seriously put up your barrier on the kill shot? That was so rude. Perish. Oops. Thought it was gonna auto target that. I guess his hitbox was far left. <laughs> he was to the right of me, but his hitbox was more left than right. That was interesting. Oh, Gaigui. I don't. Will you stop shielding my final hit? It's kind of annoying. There we go. I'm getting trolled. She didn't have to pick up so many items. Man. And I guess I can, in theory, get rid of my, um, uh, Platon Drop. See my item again, that's annoying. Looks like Marco's from the lobby. Let's sell items real quick. 
I'm assuming if Marco is listening in on the stream, if there's something you would like to look for, let me know. I don't have you on the list just for what item you wanted. I guess we could cross off a red ring. down. It says we end Sunday. Where were we at? From a Monday to a Sunday. Nearly 70 power materials just this week. I mean, I think this should give you a good indication. I left like, what, six or seven power materials behind this week on stream. The fact I still have that many is crazy. I almost kept defense material again, and I literally removed all of them. So silly. Okay. Let me know, Marco, if you're out there, if you'd like to do some runs, if you're looking for anything particular. Probably do those. Otherwise, I have to think. It's kind of awkward doing runs with two people, because that limits the scope. Three people is fine. I feel like the game is balanced for a four-person party of average gear. So two people with really good gear do about as much damage, but there's some runs that care more about number of people rather than power. Like if we're doing something in tower or CCA and we need lockdown, we just need physical bodies hitting things. What am I going to do before I forget to do this? Only items I'm actively hunting are the units. Uh, like B101 you mean? I remember you mentioning that before. Oh, all of them? Interesting. B502 in theory we could hunt for with just two people there is a hunt specifically we would do for that oh pso will you stop eating my mouse control i'm trying to look through my notes killing me pso my mouse is physically on a different monitor and it's like no go ahead and eat it whatever it selected the right character let's help marco with some of those hunts i gotta put these items away though the V801, I usually think... Deuce. It's even better with this. It's all Zeus, that's pretty accurate. I'm trying to think if I would do, like... I, I usually think purple and pink. this away. This is the item I was looking for earlier. 60 hit vice. This does make a big difference. She does not need it. But welcome, Hellcleep. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, there's two hunts we could in theory do for V101. That's not too hard to figure out. Just do an NMU3 in a moment. Hmm. Question is, if we were doing surface, I think orange is better, if I remember correctly. My brain is processing. It's going through all the item permutations. So orange surface... The thing, the thing with pink is I don't really care about Cleos and Heavenly HP. Purple, it's like, if I want Vices from Zabuda, it's okay. Both pink and orange, from what I remember, get Vieto 1 and Kunai. I think they're, like, literally identical. I don't even think they're flip-flop. But the difference is Slicer Fanatics. 
I kind of want to slice her fanatic. My brain is processed. <laughs> it it went through the permutations. I think that's what I would rather do. I could do purple vice for Sabuda in theory. Let's do some orange runs. Now I have to think, while coming back from food, what would be the best quest for that? What has a high number of zoos? There's usually massive attack 4B, but does the anniversary quest have it? Processing. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Now I might actually just look it up. I actually don't know the answer to that. Yeah, because I think it only has eight zoos, which I don't think is worth doing. I was trying to think in my head. I'm like, it can't be that many. I guess you could, in theory, do desert for 18, but that feels a little weird. Yeah, let's just do massive attack 4B. That's usually the quest I end up doing. I was just curious. So it was 8 in the event quest and the other one in 18 in desert. 18 in desert's okay. But I don't really care about orange underground. Like, it's... It's good in some ways. Like, if I wanted a Sincesta, it's not bad. If I'm going into, like, the boss, it's fine. But if I'm just doing Desert by itself, eh. Like, the big appeal is doing Lame to Argent, I would think. Let's go ahead and make an Episode 4 game for Massive Attack B. I work through the process. I'm testing how much I remember without looking it up. It's like, uh... They're not items I actively hunt anymore, but I did used to hunt them. Double Attic is super ideal here, and then I'll take a magical piece from here. I figured we'll go through each of them four times. I think that's a magic number. Three is not enough. We'll do four. So I'm thinking that'll give some decent chances at more slicers, which I'm not going to say no to more slicers. I actually do want them. If anybody wants to hop in, we're going to do V801, and then for V101... I actually have to think what the best hunt would be. I mean, obviously you could do Zoo again, but like, from the standpoint of actually getting a V101, what is the best one now that they've removed TTF? Because honestly, I don't think I really bothered hunting the other ones. Like, I think Zoo is common, like, more common. Twenty-three grass assassins in the event quest for one. Just let me know if you'd like to hop in, otherwise we'll get started in a moment. Well, you know what I used to do? I used to do Christmas fiasco. I used to double dip Christmas fiasco, because I would do Viridian and take it all the way to the desert. That's how I used to get some uh Zuzus. Iwan Crest. E1 Quest Viridia. Do you think that's the best one now? Because I think from the standpoint of clears, like, technically... Sinnoh Red is like 1 in 3,000. Crimson Assassin, as long as it has... Brain is processing it. As long as it has both drop rate and rare rate, it would take the full advantage. Otherwise, I'll, I'll sit there and calculate it. Let's see. Assuming it's not 80%, it would benefit. It is not 80% drop rate. Okay, so yeah, it would probably be what Hellcleave said. Okay, so I'm assuming it's just us two. So we're going to do some V801, V101. And then technically, we could V502 with less people doing, uh... Technically, Hellcleave's quest. <laughs> it's ECA. Because you could do that with green ID. So if I want to do it with less people, that's what I would do. There we go. Brain processed. 
Yeah, V101 I used to just get free for free in TTF. I think, like, legitimately 80% of them came from there. I probably got one from Orange ID once because I did try the Orange ID hunts for Lost Soul Blade. And then I probably just happened to be doing Green ID incidentally to the boss and picked it up. But it's, it was not like a zoo hunt on purpose. I'll put it this way. I, I don't think I've ever done B for V101, like what we're doing now. I've only gone to the boss. If you specifically just want B at a 1, I guess it makes sense to do this quest. I kind of view those as like incidental rares. I've been calling them mini paydays in the new document. Because it is true, like, the V801, V101, and everything else at least sells for, like, a guaranteed amount, more or less. There's nothing about, like... It's not going to be, like, a great market fluctuation for them like you would potentially see if there's an interested buyer in a cosmetic frame with max stats, for example. It's just something like, this unit is worth this much, it is usually always that much, unless an event happens to depreciate the price, kind of things. But it's always worth more PDs. Like, you're gonna get more for that than, like, two or three bad frozen shooters with, like, that are all zeroed, for example. But yeah, I probably agree with Hellcleave on that one. I think from the standpoint of caves, it could be interesting to try that quest for real. I'm half wondering as an incidental quest if it would now be worth doing. Probably not. There's the uh bo -bo -bo -bo, the one quest that goes to falls. I was gonna say I feel burned out today mentally. <laughs> too too much thinking about other things. There is the one quest where it goes, um, Caves, Mines, Ruins, and you only have to fight Falls. That quest, I'm still wondering if there's a better ID to do that quest. Because I, I need to potentially update that in the section IDs. I think temporarily I wrote green. I was just thinking if Viridian would even bother with the new rare updates. Oh, look, the Fuse Trap. Bouncing me. Annoying. I think the problem with that quest is I just don't like how dead mines feels. They're really just like standing around half the time. So I just realized I never restock fluids, but I should be fine. Or it should last me for surface. If we want to clear further, it's fine. Using Barda as intended. Yeah, if I happen to see a rare zoo, I'll be like, cool. I get a kunai with a lot of hit. That would be awesome. I would love that full time on one of my forces. I have some arrest handguns. I think hopefully it'll help me get a few. And a few might have been from the uh, Christmas event. Because they're, they're at weirdly abnormally high amounts of hit, like 65. I'm pretty sure, because that's how I got my Hell Handgun. I'm pretty sure the equivalency drop for uh, Arrest.
wrong. Suffering from die bombing for a little bit. Really? I seriously got lasered while putting out that many Gafoe? Game, please. I feel like I just get cheated sometimes. Like, I, I had literally a full stack out. It wasn't like I just started casting it. Were they like just out of range? What was that? I know. Terrace Farm, indeed. That was BS. Probably go pick up these two trifluids because that's like an, ent an entire surface player's worth of. Look at that, back up to five. All it takes is one solid pickup. Yep, there's anybody that wants in on some of the unit hunting. We'll do some of that. I don't mind having more V801s. Technically, I do require a lot, but I'm probably just going to pay PDs for them at this point. For those of you that have been around for a while, you might remember the absolute suffering to get the first V801. I think it was two years, chat. Two years of playing Pink ID, I finally got a V801. I'm like, why did it take so long? In that time frame, I think I got three red rings and four v V101s before I got a single V801 while playing Pink ID. I remember rolling my eyes. <laughs> that was that was like a 2022-2021 struggle. I don't know what it was about that drop, but it would not drop. Limiter, I don't think I've picked one up since 2022. Actually, no. I'm willing to say I haven't picked it up since 2021 either. I feel like I tried last year very briefly, gave up. Last two years ago, I tried like seriously and didn't get it. And since then, it's been kind of a low end priority. That's what initially, to give you an idea, that's what initially it's inspired the raw moral. Because I'm like, you know what? I can't get this stupid thing to drop when it's playing uh, Christmas fiasco on Viridian. Even though it should be basically free if you run it like a hundred times, which is what I did. <laughs> I'm like, and I can't get it to drop still. So that inspired the white raw moral. And I just figured, you know what, maybe she'll eventually do things like tower. And even the way I statted her was specifically for episode 4 because of the fact that I could not get limiter. So it'll be pretty funny if we go to pod with her potentially later today. We finally get that limiter. them to stop bullying me. Okay, we know the Dwarfon is coming soonish. Also, I'm not gonna lie, it will make me very sad if we see Dwarfon clear here. I think it's just Blackout and Karace, right? I don't think it's anything interesting. I don't think it's Cleo on orange. Cleo sounds like... Usually it's heavenly HP Cleo. That's pink ID for sure. I played way too much pink. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even going to second guess it. I know for a fact that's what it was. Orange is blue Doshi. Yeah. Welcome remote battery. No, no worries. My brain knew. You know, I had the Gafoe selected and everything. I still got zapped. Okay, I'm gonna stun lock them with Rafoe and kill the satellite lizard. As long as oh, I'm gonna say as long as the Dwarfon is taken care of, I got them stun locked. Now I no longer have them stun locked. 
Ouch. Stop lasering me! Stop it! Thank you. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. Eating the mono fluid, that's for sure. You know what? I forgot to see if my old forum post was still there. I'm assuming it still is. I asked if Pazuzu was broken. <laughs> I think I think that's been four years that I think at this point it's been sitting there. I remember asking because I counted 30 Pazuzus with no drop for a 1 in 3. So I just want you to know, chat, on record, I might be one of the most unluckiest hunters. <laughs> Holy. I think it's still there. It should at least update with my name now because I, I updated my old username to uh, the Twitch name. Oh well. That was back when I was doing Viridian hunting for limiters as well as uh, off chance LNKs. Probably still is. It went horribly, chat. I just want you to know. It was one that was one of the worst hunts I have ever done. I was so mad after I did it that I, I actually took a break from Anniversary. It was nonsense. Oh, I heard a rare. I was hoping it was a badge. It was not. At least now, if the zoos go out of bounds, the items will drop in bounds. I, I can't imagine going back to the way PSO used to play when I first started, even for Affinia. But just like how, how much nonsense they ended up fixing in the system. Nothing like inherently different about them, but just fixing their drops. Let alone the whole concept of having a drop system where every individual player gets loot not uh, something that used to exist for PSO. You need to take a path. I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm Gafoe stacking. No, I think that's for C. I think it's uh the one to the behind me. I think I don't think it's the middle path. I could be wrong. And, oh, I was gonna say I'm, I'm gonna pick the middle path. Not the middle path. Oh, did you go down this one enough? I thought you just checked this. Oh, or did you just not go down far enough? Oh, you just didn't go down far enough, the other one. That's fair.
I always find it interesting for the massive attacks, the why they make you pick a random path. That's not even like the door you go to when you exit. Like I know the one I just walked to, the last one I walked to is where we have to go. But even when you do like ABC, why they decided to make you pick a random path. I'm like, I don't remember after not doing the hunt, which path it is. Oh, PSO. It would have made more sense if it was actually the door that opens later to train you to go there, but no, it's just a random door. Like, we are never going down that long path, for example. So silly. There's a lot of damage I just took. time. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, I know I'm gonna go down this path, but I'm like... <laughs> I think if we do the quest again, I'm gonna bring a merge. Let's speed this up a little bit. This. Right now I get an ice boost, which is fine, but I don't really use three seals damage here. Having a Rafoe merge here would help. It's usually what I swap into when I'm in this room. Oh well. Not gonna go back for it now. Ouch. If I had looked at the beginning of the run, I might have gone back. Closer. This should suffice. See, so I can see if I'm pressing it fast enough. If I take a step forward, I'm not doing it frame perfect. But if I do move forward, I'm moving out of range of them. So it's kind of win-win for me, honestly. Now three seals is going to get a bit of a workout.
I need to refoey that to hit the bird. Stuff I don't normally need to do. Damn, he really crit me. That sucks. Her defense is atrocious. I would just like to go on record. Like, it is so bad right now. Can't wait till she's at a little higher MST. In fact, I want to compare later with her max stats how far off she is from max MST. So I'll probably wear the one that just adds defense so she doesn't just instantly get murdered like that. I'll take the laser if they want to hit me. I want them a little closer. That's mean. I heard the rare drop sound. It was just a silver badge. Damn. Yeah, if we don't get to the end, I apologize. I didn't bring the right uh, barrier. She needs a little bit of a boost. So rude. I gotta go back for the badge. I'll do this to slow down the zoos the next wave. Stun lock is real. I'm gonna get used to quick menuing in this. Unlock most of the room. They just have to let the DPS pick it off. Yeah, I think also bringing bringers will be mandatory. Or if we have a third player with demons, that would speed it up. So we're gonna lose like a solid minute on Gertabulus here. Hulkweave will jump in. Thank you, Hulkweave. Material dropped in here. Did 
hiding? Where is it? What? Oh, maybe it's in this cluster. Oh, that was evil. That was evil, chat. It was evil. Did you see that? It was three items deep. See, that's why you also need an item reader on top of the dots. That right there... Nonsense. It's happy to go away. forward i didn't follow the halfway line so i like to imagine if you look in the the map there's that little dent if you draw a line all the way across the room if you never cross that halfway line they have to dive bomb you that's a way of dealing with the zoos i did not respect the halfway line so now they should dive bomb me marco might yeah now they should dive bomb because marco backed up so knowing that speeds up the run a lot <laughs> by the way chat i'm like Knowing that you can play the room further back and then they come to you means that now you can hit the back half of the room and the things that are far from you have to pull forward. I think that's something that's like hard to communicate like in the in the moment. But man, oh man, does that make the run more consistent? So I don't have to worry about any of the zoos because they, they have to cross the halfway line. I know they're going to walk into me if I just keep attacking. And now I don't have to worry about random laser interrupting my attacks or anything like that, because they, they have to fly. If they're the only enemies left, then great. Then we just grants and barter them. Got him. At least we're almost done with the run. That is a plus. Oh boy. <laughs> getting getting murderized by a Goron Detonator is always fun. Okay, so, so I will definitely make sure one, I'm gonna bring in my Ripoe to speed up that one room. Because that costs like 20 seconds by itself. And then if needed, I'll bring demons. I'd prefer not to use it on this character, but we'll see. Stop hitting me with the melee attack. Oh my god, just stop it. Thank you. Putting me almost at a heal loop because their defense is so bad. Okay. GG. I don't think there's anything I'm looking for. So we're gonna do the wall check. See anything fun in here? Any photon crystals? Everybody says. Oh. Mysterious trifluid has emerged. There we go, I mashed that dialogue. Oh, I actually ran out of trifluids. That's kind of funny. That would have been interesting. Okay, so let's go fix that. Let's go get the right merge. Don't need three seals for this run. We want Rafoe, Gafoe. Foe 24. Get out of here. If we merge, we'll make the surface faster. Once we go underground, I'd like Rafoe more. We'll default to Gifoe merge. But I could put away my three seals to hold another item. Not, mon not much lunk on Heaven Striker runs today. Sorry to hear the help we. I 
I do a Fire Scepter for Rafoe. I guess what I'll do when I go to Switch, I'll do both, because that'll be a pretty big damage increase. I'll leave Congeal Cloak on, because I do spam Ice a lot in the run. Although when there's more people, I spam it less. Okay, do another run. Thank you for also joining Remote Battery. I think this character used to be White ID and then I made them... I know the Fomoral, Fomoral was also White at one point. They've been through a couple different section ID changes. Go significantly faster. Better equipment, more party members. Go back before we stack. Get out of here, Rappies. Stacking okay. Now that is a fast clear. Nice photon draw. By enemies. And double Rebarta is just brutal. Okay, back to Gafoe stacking. I want my frame perfect Gafoe stack to squeeze as much damage as possible. Yeah, I don't even like to Rafoe at all on the surface because there's so many enemies that just get hit by fire. Like, these enemies will get slowed down. And then by the time the zoos die, I can basically instantly kill the satellite lizard wave. If we have strong ATP, me casting two Gafoe's versus using, uh, like, Arda on the zoo, it's fine. But again, you have to kind of analyze where the DPS is. Like, I, I trust them the Hellcleave damage. I am not going to question it. I'm like, that, whatever Hellcleave is fighting is dead. Um, it's going to be dead before I can even consider swapping. My goal is to just set up for the next wave. So in some ways, Hellcleave will let me autopilot. Just go brain off. No thinking needed. Already winning.
Alright, that was the disrespectful Bardo to hit on. I could use Rizan here to stun lock them. find our magical little position. That magical position allows us to wombo combo them, which is why I also don't recommend using Rifoe here, as you can kill that wave sort of fast, but what about the upcoming waves? All about the upcoming waves. This is another wave where Gafoe is just really powerful. Watch how it leans into yet another fire reap wave. This is three waves in a row where Gafoe benefits so hard. Look, four waves in a row that benefit really hard. And then the Dwarfon is going to spawn, and the Dwarfon also takes damage. There, there's so many strong Bowie waves. This is the kind of stuff I was talking about before, where I was hoping the atrocities would lean into it a bit more. Where there's just like kind of a natural flow, and you get rewarded. Nice slicer. You get rewarded for like noticing like enemy weakness patterns. I didn't really feel like I got that when I played some of the other quests. I'm gonna go back for a fluid, you can ignore me. A little bit of a greedy play, but whatever. Uh, this wave I actually usually switch to rough OE versus guff OE. This is another time where I swap over normally. Although I forgot my button command for it. The reason I like riff OE here is that it hits everything and it slows down the Astarks for the team. So it gives them time to kill the priority targets. The only time where I can think I would not do it is possibly up after this, because there's like a dwarf on coming. But if you take a look at the distance of Rafoe in this quest, if you were to Rafoe the zoos that appear each time, you actually stunlock the entire wave with just one spell. The only thing you have to do is put out one Rafoe for the dwarf on. Like that's where you might arguably want to stack. But then if you look at how we're Rafoeing here, I killed this entire room with just a couple of Rafoes. And here's another example. If I Rifoe the zoo, it actually hits the other zoo automatically. Or if I Rifoe the Astark, I mean, excuse me. So the enemy that's naturally resistant to fire can be used as my focal point for Rifoe. And of course, you can still Gafoe stack. There's enough dwarf bonds here. But there's also a mix of enemies where it just helps to stunlock the room. Because you'll find that if you only Gafoe stack in this particular area, the zoo more often than not will laser you. And that was kind of my finding playing the quest. I like how it was kind of like a little puzzle, where I think the solution is if you have somebody that can Gafoe stack, that's great. But if you do a single Rafoe, you shut down this like, entire wave. So it just makes it like super easy for ATP. So it really depends on your team comp, whether it makes more sense to Gafoe stack or not. Technically, you can position so that there's somebody always like to the right of that rock to make sure, for example, the zoo that's over here that spawns where this item dropped is not uh, on the loose. But I like having those little thoughts. I don't talk about them as often as I probably should on stream. That's the stuff I'm thinking about when I'm looking at waves. I don't really feel like I had that moment when I was doing the atrocity quests. And I don't think it's from lack of runs either. Right, I just don't... Like, maybe, maybe visually I might have been confused for some of the weaknesses, because it's not how I'm used to thinking. But at least there's, like, a certain flow. Like, if I see certain groupings at Episode 4 enemies, like, I know that this room is going to be the Gafoe room. Like, I'm not even going to question it, because it's just going to be another time we stack. But, like, this room and the next room are Gafoe room, where it rewards you for standing still. Where we have to potentially move a lot, like, when we're in that awful zigzag hellscape. That's where I would use Rafoe for sure. Because, like, Gafoe will just take too long to hit things. You can see, like, the Rappies will fall. They'll almost instantly die. And then the wave is over. So, a lot of the times if I'm in a new quest, I'm looking for rooms where I could potentially do a lot of stacks. So, like, there were some candidates for that in, like, August Atrocity 1, where there was a very wide open room, but it had a couple of really close fire weaknesses, which I thought was neat. But again, like, I'm just gonna stand in the middle of this room and spam Gafoe, and you will see that almost every single time, I'm now denying Marissa waves, or I'm denying something that, like, Pew Pew lasers really hate in the quest. Well, these are the things I just want to mention. 
So it's like some of it is, yes, I've run it more than other quests. And, you know, I'll forget some nuances when I haven't run it in a while. But knowing that I could just sit here and do this is, like, potentially saving minutes from the run. Now, granted, there's some opportunities where I probably should rip Bowie. So we're going to let the team go down the other side. Like, see, if if we had to physically move and stop Kafoeing, it'd be less useful. But look at how all these Gorons are now walking into the lingering fireballs. And they just have to kill that lone satellite lizard. I'm not going to help them with it. I'm going to be like, you're on your own. You're on your own. I'm not helping you. It's on the far end of the room. I know exactly where it is, because that's the thing that does with Kafoe. But now, we can switch over to some ice if we want to. There's going to be uh, a couple of lizards, which I guess we could bully after we're done with these. Then once we're done bullying these things to death, we could probably do that. They're going to do this. I'm going to try to get Bowie stack while we're waiting. Because that way we can hit the lizards, and then we're going to have to slow down the Gertabulu in a little bit. Yeah, uh, nerf you. And the nice thing is, if you have enough Gafoe stacks, you can actually kill the Marissas just with lightning. You'll see this a lot more in very hard mode in particular, where you can actually kill in the S room. Instead of using fire to kill the... Uh, Marissa's. You can actually just chain lightning or resolve that room. That's that's a very hard mode strat, but it's still relevant for when you chip them out like we did. So these are the kinds of observations you'll kind of make running the quest over and over. First cloak, nice. So now I know this is going to be a Rafoe room. I'm going to leave it on Fire Scepter. I'm going to switch to Rafoe merge. Since I know they're too far away, in fact, it's better for me to wait for her back up here. I know that if I Rafoe here, I will be able to hit potentially multiple groups. So see, I'm able to keep them at bay. I'm able to stack it. And you see how they're all confused? Like, yes, they might get close on occasion. Look at this. Perfect wave control. I can even hit the lizards behind me by refoing the frontwards targets. So I can let the enemies come to the team while still chipping them out. Similarly, once I've done enough damage, I could just chain lightning through and kill the Goron detonator. Lots of badges I gotta go pick up. Yeah, this room lends itself to Rafoe just because the spawns are so far away. So you could kind of think of this room has two natural groupings. So there'll be somebody that hangs back, and there'll be two people that, or at least one person that will be advanced. Horses could afford to be in the middle because they can Rafoe to reach either side. So for example, even though I'm in kind of an awkward position here, I'm still in a good way to just Rafoe my way out. And then as needed, if this wave happens to die, I take my little steps into the proper position, and I just refoe that wave. So if I have a Glide Divine, I could also potentially just nerf them full screen. But since we have multiple forces, it's not 100% necessary that I do this. We're going to provide some assistance. So we know the next wave will be Goron Detonator, so we're going to just spam Resond. If we stand in the middle, we actually can stun both Goron Detonators simultaneously. That's my little tech tip. Yeah, I'm helping stunlock the other one, and we're doing a lot of damage. Upcoming wave is kind of annoying, because it's Goron detonators on either side. There is a place you can stand in the middle. I usually have one person up on the mid part of the S, like about where the green player is now, and they could just fire inwards. I'll choose to be in the middle, because I just am kind of used to it. I don't know if it's the best position, technically. I've seen forces stay on the mid part of the S, if you look at the minimap. But otherwise, I'm just here to stun lock and just delay them. Unfortunately, I don't have any ATP in front of me, so I'm gonna have to melee these. <laughs> Get rid of these. Here's an example. See how that bird would have dive bombed us? Because I'm automatically defaulting to Rafoe, I stopped the dive bomb and hit the Marissa. You'll notice that that's kind of a trend. That's the kind of enemy placement I was kind of hoping to see in custom quests, where there's like an enemy that would potentially punish you if you don't immediately hit them. But if you do something like room wiping or like Ripoe, you can use a target that takes less damage from fire in order to control the enemies that are weak to fire. There's actually a lot of interesting design choices with these quests. Like these are some of the few ones I actually like. And it's because of the fact that there's like those little nuances but, like, if you experiment with, like, Gafoe versus Rafoe, you do get rewarded. Um, this upcoming room... 
is I usually I usually start with Rifoe, but I usually switch back to Gafoe to clear it. So what I'll end up doing is I'll end up magical piecing into what I want here. So the very first room that we go into, if you look at the enemy pattern, there's literally one Goron by itself in the middle of the room. If nobody shoots anything, I can actually use that to stun lock the whole room. This is the power of Rifoe. See how I'm hitting every single enemy? Like, this is the kind of design placement I want to see if people are going to do custom quests. Like, I want to hold it to this kind of standard. Where I don't know if people, like, pay attention to that stuff. Or if I, like, Rezond here. I, they're in, like, the perfect distance for max rank Rezond to stop them from die bombing. Similarly, this room is a l This wave, I think, is a little disappointing for me. This is kind of a, do you have two players check? So they're on either sides. At some point, we'll need people near the entrances. Or specifically the red door, because it's going to be uh, Gertabulu. I think this is like the only wave in this room that I think is a miss. I don't like how they split and you can't really deal with it as the uh, first. And I like that Rezond here, you might unintentionally learn about the zoos being stopped by Rezond while dealing with Warden Detonators. So this kind of teaches you, if you're a new player, you might have observed the first time that you went to do Rezond to hit the uh, Goron Detonators on either side of the room. But that actually also stops the zoos. So I like in a way that the quest teaches you without like giving you a tutorial. And it's really up to you to kind of observe it. Similarly, like how we were looking before at the uh, the line in the upcoming room, we know that if you cross the halfway point, and it gives you a really good indicator on the map, you know that they will laser you instead of dive bomb. So it's kind of an interesting way to learn about the zoo mechanic. So because we're all playing, so now we're playing pretty much as far back as possible. So if we walk all the way back and just spam Gafoe, see how they are forced to come in. If you're wondering why the lasers happened, it's because the player was on the halfway line. <laughs> if you don't want that to happen, respect the line. Rip. I was gonna say, I can't help you there. I'm barely a meter. So if we respect the halfway line, nobody ever needs to cross it. They should just die bomb into it naturally. So now I can go back to Gafoe stacking. Eventually, when we see the Gordon Detonators, we'll do Rezond, and then we'll end with some other things. So again, like, I now no longer have to ever think about the zoos. They're already controlled without me needing to do anything, and my fireballs are slowing down every enemy in the room. Like, this is the kind of placement I wish more quests did. So I want to give proper respect to this quest. I think this is actually, like, an original quest where it uses enemy placement in an interesting way. I don't like how they lose their drops at the S rank in the original version, but I like the idea that the rooms and the, the way the, the spawns are in the rooms are designed that there's a visual cue in order to proceed further. Kind of like when we go through some of the pits in episode 4, I like that there's like an object you could walk towards, like there's a pink crystal on the wall. If you walk towards that pink crystal, there will never be a trap there in the episode 4 quests. And that's how we we use our visual guide in order to get through. Yeah, you'll get kind of a feel for it. A lot of XP. We were getting over 340. So like, maybe I'll go back and analyze the footage and feel differently about some of the other quests that are more new. Since obviously I haven't run those as much as I've run a quest like this. But I feel like the design is a bit more evident. At least from the perspective of being able to clear it as a force, I feel like this quest was designed for forces to clear it. Versus just like, there's a lot of enemies from random areas and they all have mixed resistances in every wave. It's definitely a very different lens to view a quest. But it is what it is. We'll do two more. And then while walking back, I have the opportunity to go back. Yeah, I like that I start and end with Gafoe Merge. That's always comforting.
So we did get a slicer. I think we could get something else though. Plus the bow always sways. It's so active. We're gonna believe in our team. I'm <laughs> like, I'm not moving. Listen, I'm committing to the Gafoe sack. Listen. Yeah. I think what I've also learned is that I'm not really needed for this final wave, so I just start setting up for the next wave. I'm gonna let the cast deal with the uh, Rappies on Wake Up. I'd rather be closer to here. So I could do my uh, chain attacks. Probably heavenly something that's just strong. Thanks, thank you. See the goal visually, see that monster that just spawned in front of me? I should probably step exactly where he spawns, because that'll hit the back of the line more consistently. Yeah, you can see we almost approached 400 XP a second. So for those that don't know, when you're a forest playing up to that point, that is so much solo XP and it's so easy. The best part is if you're- you can even spook the Rappies if you just really think you can't defeat them. Okay, I'm gonna use Rafoe on these things because I realized the Babudas are easy for the other players to kill. The rat and the Yawis aren't. So I'm gonna stun lock the Babudas, but also damage them. So that's why I'm kind of talking about before that the concept when you make a quest design around forces of there is a target that is resistant to me, but it's positioned in such a way that I can find it useful for Rafoe spam. Like, you don't see that thought process used very often. That's why I'd like to draw attention to it. Like, that's another example where Rafoe just shuts down that entire wave, and then your ATP has, like, a million years to punish the, the things that you can't kill with fire. Oh, oops. What are you doing? Gafoe sacks. Oh, well. Since I missed the Gafoe sacking, I probably should have Rafoe there. But I'm committing now. So I'm gonna believe in them killing these zoos in under four seconds. So one... Two, three, three seconds. <laughs> I would have been able to get out two spells, but instead, I got multiple Kafoes. We also know that uh, Barda will generally be better than Grants on these targets. In particular, if we have like Summit Moon equipped. So if I want to do some minor observation. Wait, I'm confused. Did I lose my quick menu? That would explain some things. What button is that normally? Two? But anyway, from that standpoint, we could potentially take advantage of simple text. If I was playing solo force, I would probably only use Barda because the ice weaknesses of monsters scale like really high for some reason in multiplayer. Kind of unfortunate where i can kill that zoo with the summit moon and like i think optimistically three realistically four casts we 
we're gonna focus on sunlocking the zoos. We don't really care about damage. We just want to make sure the room gets under control. And I got badged again from them. That's so rude. So yeah, we know we're almost at the wave where we start considering other things. I'm gonna check check my setup again. I might have reverted to an older setup. Because I think I was going back and forth whether L2 would activate a menu, and that maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's on the older setup and not the new setup. Because it's important to be able to access that equipment menu as a force, so that way you can rapidly go into equipment. So keyboard people don't have to worry about that. F2 is pretty easy to reach. But for a controller, that's not a default button. I'm going to check my control layout after this. Because this is a room where I do actually switch genuinely from Gafoe to Rafoe. Although, arguably, I could still keep it as Gafoe for stacking in between Rafoe's. Arguably. I'm going to walk away, and then I'm going to check my controls. Where is my F2? Oh. Feel about. I, I guess that kind of works. Made it L2 plus right thumbstick. I guess that's fine. I think I just have to tune my stick sensitivity down if I want to use that realistically. Even the battle. Pick that up in a moment. Good to give to new players. Technically, it's like receiving a PD. That was a bad time to run out of TP. I found a zeroed Musashi, which is disappointing. Oh, that is way too sensitive. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Wait, de dead zone go up. Holy. I'm gonna put it at like 20%. Is that good enough? Oh, that's a little better. I'm, say, I'm not gonna lie, that, that was kind of monstrous. That sounds like a lot, but honestly, it's like I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on it. So I, I don't know what it's considering 20%, but I can assure you that my thumb puts the lightest of press on it. Now at least I have to move it from neutral. There we go. That should lead to less misinputs. Since now my thumb has to actually move the stick versus just like faintest of pressure on the stick to cause it to move. I want to make sure that I'm committing to it and I'm not just bumping the, th the stick with my right thumb. Something silly. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Anyway, debuff and back to Kapoe stacking. I don't have like a specific landmark I stand in this room. I just gotta pick a spot knowing they'll probably die. <laughs> that's just that's my rule of thumb. I'm like, am I vaguely near a spawn of something? Cool. Like the Mercy can't do anything here. So I'm just gonna chip them out as the team just shoots them. 
I guess if I wanted to, I could walk more towards the door that I see in the distance to share the damage with the team a bit better. I guess. I see we're just Kapoe stacking our brains out. Yeah, definitely when we have any downtime here, it just makes sense to Kapoe stack. So sadly, I think I have to use Robarda now. How dare they make me swap. Yeah, I'm use Rafoe on the Grand Detonator to kill the Marissa and stunlock the Detonator simultaneously. Multitasking. I think I killed the Gurdabulu with fire damage. That was interesting. Got demons his brains out. So yeah, this room is basically the Rafoe dream. So definitely now if you have Rafoe, this is like hmm. Cycle wand heaven. <laughs> All, all you're going to be spamming are 360 Lightning, Ice, and Rafoe. You're never going to be using Gafoe here. It's too awkward of a room. Here we go. You're wide open. Thank you for following Crisado13. Hopefully you're doing well today. Over Foey there was kind of mean. Yeah, we're gonna need one ATP over here. See, they're trying to melee, but they attack so slow that Razan locks them down. Kind of satisfying. So this is as someone who just started on Affinia, this is crazy to watch. If you have any questions for us, by all means, feel free to ask. We were just talking about enemy design. So we were talking about before how, like, if you see things like a zoo and then enemies that are weak to fire underneath of it, or like this scenario here, I can stunlock the zoo and hit the Marissa simultaneously, where Gafoe would not reach them in time. And depending on my positioning, I can assist with Gafoe here. Oops, I took one step too far. And then how we could do things like Razan to stop the zoos from die bombing, and then when we're comfortable, we switch over to Rafoe. We could use that as like stall tactics use my normal Barda here. I'm gonna grant so that way I'm looking at the target. Congratulations Marco, you found the point of the hunt. You did it. So we'll still do uh, I think one more after this. But I do think there's some interesting design elements in this quest. I, I wish other vanilla PSO quests followed the same kind of logic. So again, we're gonna come to my favorite room. So witness how the enemies are spawned here, Crisado. If you look, there's just one lone enemy in the middle by itself, and they are literally the perfect distance to hit with Rafoe. So if I do this, I hit the entire room. <laughs> so it's like, I like that those little things are in there when the quests think about it, like from how a force would play the game. Oh, hey, Rarazu. Oh, maybe we'll get a kunai. 
So those are the kinds of things like you want to be on the lookout for in your when you're playing episode four. You're, you would be surprised how often there's like little enemies where you're like, oh, there's this really tanky eye fire resistant target on uh, no kunai rib. Nice, hopefully you've got a kunai. Hopefully it has some hit percentage. Or how we'll use Razond here, even though it's not their weakness, just to force them to not use laser. Nice. Marco also got a kunai. That's a fun weapon for other players. We use it on the Huka Seals to shut down Dwarf Bonds, the kunai. And I like that this room, you can see if we use Razond, we stunlock literally the whole room. So all of our damage characters can do whatever they want here. And thanks to the no damage cancel uh, fix from Affinio a while back, we don't really have that much to worry about. Similarly, I can use the Gerdabulu here to bully the Marissas with Fire Blast while also stunning the Gerdabulu. And he attacks a little less. Although sometimes our team kills so fast. <laughs> They're just like, de demons will uh, always do some things. But this is kind of like the... What is it? The, the titular uh, grinding quest for when you're playing forces. So, for example, if you are very high level, you go to make a new character and you move your mind mag over. This is like one of the quests that you play as a force on episode 4 in order to uh, clear it. Now, granted, you're going to have some struggles with Gerdabulu. That's why, if you see Murphy there, have that big pink blade. That's a slicer of Fnatic, which we conveniently get on ultimate mode on this difficulty which does a basic reduction of their health to 25% of what it was. And that saves literal minutes in the run. If you don't have it, it is kind of a pain. Every Gerda Bulu is going to take like a minute 30. With it, it takes like 15 seconds. It's like such a big difference. The fact that that weapon can hit the Gerda Bulu up to three times because its claws count as individual targets is very silly. But anyway... If you observe, most of us are respecting the halfway point of this room. So if you look, there's like that little teeny tiny indent on the minimap on the right hand side. If nobody is past that point, that's a visual distance cue from the map that will we know that if we're not above that point, that the zoos have to dive bomb us. I think this is a great way to teach new players about positioning. Like, see how that zoo is like really far away from me? I know he won't laser me because I'm behind the halfway part and he is not. So due to the way the spawns have worked, he's just always going to die bomb. So there's actually a lot of AI manipulation you can do in Episode 4 with the zoos. You can't do it in like every quest, unfortunately, because some of them they start automatically moving before you're in the room. But for ones where the zoo spawns in, uh, there are strategies to force them to do certain tactics. You'll see me walk in weird ways in some of the rooms in order to provoke a dive bomb by getting to a certain distance in the room. So it's, it's kind of an interesting behavior with the zoos. I'd love the bronze badge somewhere. Oh well. Do our little uh, crystal check. I'm assuming they popped it. I don't hear anything. There's items on the other side of the wall. I think they opened them already. Nice. So, I lost count, but I think we'll do one more. Then we'll switch up quests. So we're doing a uh, specifically requested... Marco was looking for V801. We received a V801. Uh, this quest is also decent-ish for not only XP, uh, but it's also good for things like Slicer Fanatic. And then if you're really desperate, in theory, you could get a blue Doshi Violet Nimadao during the quest, but uh, that's likely to happen. Next, we'll move on to V101 hunts, which I guess we could do the new Viridian Caves stuff? <laughs> Question mark. I forget if it's Massive Attack 1B or whatever. I'll do a quick look up before we start. It's one of the classic Purple Lily cave hunts. El Cleave will correct me at some point if I get the quest wrong. Wave his finger. Okay, so final one for V801.
Yeah, I wouldn't mind another one, but I'm not gonna go, like, out of my way to grind it all day. So we're gonna rotate through. Yeah, they're- they're so close. I- I don't remember if- they, they might even literally have the same count. It's just where they are in the quest is slightly different. We'll- we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah, I think pretty much all the maximum attacks are good, except for this one. That one's terrible. Yeah, I'm assuming it could be C. It could be the one you literally take to falls, or it could be B. I don't remember. I was gonna say, Tiggy would know. <laughs> but I don't do the purple grind. I, I do the purple grind more as a joke, but I, I don't do mill lily hunts usually. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot to uh, equip to my proper setup. Oops. Fire bad. Another rare Rappy, huh? So, the reason we usually use techniques in this menu... Uh, one, I don't feel like setting up the quick menu for the character. Two, it allows for frame-perfect Gafoes. This is pretty important for forces, because otherwise you'll find that you will... kind of get hit in between attacks. Males can unequip their weapon in order to fast cast. Females cannot, they need to wear a cane. So in order to make sure that I get certain stun locks, I need to ensure that I'm able to do this. Also, it's a little unfortunate when I'm in this menu, they still uh, slow down when I'm targeting. Kind of unfortunate. To see how they're raising their head to attack me, if I was not doing this, there is a strong possibility I would get hit out and bodied by that attack. So it's like super important. I think we did a comparison one day of like just me mashing Gafoe versus me using one of these things for consistency. And I think it was adding on average, I think for every five or frame perfect Gafoe's I did, I only got three or four normal Gafoe's in. Just because, like, missing by, like, five or six frames adds up over time. So if I'm there for, like, a sustained period, it definitely is more beneficial for me to use this menu. Technically, you can also do this. So if I want to do this over and over, for example, I can. The only difference is that this is more menuing. So if you want to take it a little easier on your hands, but lose potentially brief information like radar and stuff like that, uh, then that would be an option for you. It's a little easier to react to what is happening to you in this menu, I would say, over the other one. I could say, for example, if I need to use TP, I just cancel the menu, or I just do the spell and don't reopen it. This is kind of personal preference, what you use. For Vault Op, I prefer to do the other menu that we were showing here. No worries, Marco. Since I'm looking to reduce how much I'm mashing, I'm just pressing Gafoe every... Like, just twice, just to confirm it. That's neat, we saw a Pazuzu. So we're not gonna do a lot of fire damage here, I'm just looking to prevent dive bombs and lasers. So that way, uh, hopefully you can clear it up. Now I'll take it seriously. Nice, nice. Gotta say, dive by me, dive bomb me, and find out what happens, Zoo. You won't like it. There we go. And now you're dead. Was it worth it, Zoo? We're gonna use chain lightning to hit the zoo. Oh, never mind. Chad already killed the zoo. I was going to use Chain Lightning off the Babuda to hit the zoo, which is further away from me. That's so like out of Razan range, but I could get the Chain Lightning up that high. Wonder World has a natural advantage for basic techniques. So there are a couple enemies, even in multiplayer, that do take enhanced ice damage. So for example, all of these zoos and Astarks are weak to ice. The range of ice is a little less compared to some of the other things I can do, like a long distance Rifoe. Um... But when you gotta do it, it works. 
Rance is unfortunately extremely slow as a technique, so even if the enemy has a weakness to it, it's very rarely the right choice. Like, it makes more sense for, like, a Fomoral to do it, for sure. And maybe in some scenarios, Fomar. But for Fonumen and Fonural, it's usually just better to do basic techniques. Well, thank you, Calvisham. I was gonna say Calvisham. I think we got him. I think we got another bot, Calvisham. Check the uh, check the auto ban. <laughs> Get him banned, Calvisham. Ruin their day. I think I recall seeing one at the beginning of the stream. For me, I only see it flicker very briefly in chat because I don't have Twitch chat open. So I'm like, hmm, a bot has happened. Oh, Dorfon hit me. Unfortunate. Now he died. There we go. See, we fixed the sensitivity on the stick. Now we're all good. So I feel like I'm not going to mess up tra I'm still going to mess up traps every now and then, but it's not going to be as prominent as it was last session, because that was like something weird is going on. And then we, I just happened to catch how it was done earlier. I'm going to go ahead and Rifoe this group to slow down the Astarks. This is clear for now. All unknown users after the band wave. Damn. Calvisham putting a uh, bot accounts out of business. Maybe I need a stream command for bot slain by Calvisham. Get a running tally. Oh, that poor Dorfon. It charged in, attempting to do something. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna use Rifoe here on the Astark to stunlock the two zoos. This is what I was talking about before. Like, I'm using an enemy that's like super resistant to us to control the wave. Similarly, I just used Rafoe on the dwarf on there. Hopefully you're doing well, Calvisham. You have to tell us about Shadow Hearts, Calvisham. Give us the play-by-play. -play. What characters are you enjoying? Do you like their gimmicks? So, last time I looked, you were... Mentioning that you cleared the mines. You were at the port town. I'm assuming you went to the wrestling ring already. That was in that small town. You could gain new moves. I think you were going to Wales. I saw a little bit of that. A big rave today from someone that likes the game. Nice. See, it paid off. Perfume lady. I don't remember the perfume lady. Rain is like trying to process. Oh, I got a slicer. Oh, cool. I got one of the items I was actually looking for. How rare. Oh, that's why I don't remember her. I never, I didn't use her. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Now that you say it, now that makes perfect sense. I'm going to be real honest with you, Calvisham. I did not bother with that character. Like, that's, that is so, also 40 hit caliber. We can shame that item later. Stupid 40 hit caliber. I think her concept was interesting. It's just that... I didn't really like the mixology characters. There's another character that has like a tarot card gimmick. And I'm like, I'm, I refuse to use this character. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, no, 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 no. I could just randomly do something bad to the party. I don't think so. Listen, I need my consistency when I play this game. I think I ended up using the wolf. Rude hero. Character who I can't reference, but I know you have the redhead. I was about to say something that would have been ultra spoilers. Um, and then, who's my fourth character? I guess I played the Grand Papillion. I think that was the normal party. I think you played, you were already playing with my normal party. 
yeah, there, there's... You, you can see how... I don't know. I feel like she just takes... Some, the perfume lady just took too long for me. But she also doesn't get, like, many abilities. Like, oh, you can do all these mix and matches. Then you get, like, two things to start with. And I'm like, I don't really like any of these effects. And I don't feel like trying and wasting my time with this. I'd rather just punch them to death with raw damage. And to be honest, it worked. I was gonna say, where's the Marissa? There it is. Bonk. 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 Regular foey. Oh, you're using Grants on that? That is way too slow. It's very resistant to light, sadly. Yeah, there's a couple more characters you haven't seen yet. There are a lot of party members. Believe it or not, you're not even close, I think, to getting all of them. But oh yeah, Wolf, Wolf was one of the chat's favorite, for sure. Hopefully you've been enjoying the combat a bit more. I was figuring because it was like a more updated version of Shadow Hearts 1. I think a lot of your complaints were probably resolved, where like normal attacks are more interesting. There's the concept of combos, you have more party members, you could kind of customize them a bit more. So if you want the dog to be a support healer or like a magic attack user, in theory you could do whatever. I don't know how I felt about the Root Hero level ups. I guess they were okay. I think the more downside to it is, like, when you get the ability to evolve forms, I didn't really get a good idea of what the evolved forms could do. And then I just arbitrarily picked one, and apparently it was the broken one. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, Galvisham. I rolled the dice, and I'm like, okay, there's no reason for me to use any other form. There's something that does, like, 1.5 times attack, Calvisham. And it gets multiplied by crits. And I'm like, how, I'm like, this has to be the best form in the game. I think it's even better than the endgame forms. So there's a couple points where, like, if we use those key items while we were buffed, we can literally one-shot a boss. And we did that on stream at one point. Because we went for uh, blind ring stuff. But I hope later when you start getting to, I think they call them the Trials, when you start getting to the Trials, I hope you have fun with that, because that helps you kind of think of the game in a different way. It, it was like definitely the first time where like I did like pretty much non-Rude Hero parties. Doing one of the make the the first is you cannot just attack it all and activate the thing that gives you more damage if it's not attacking. Hmm. Oh, do you mean the, if you never miss the ring, you don't miss damage? Oh, that's unfortunate. One, oh, one point off max. Nice, nice. Congratulations. Yeah, for me, I, for me, I like the ring settings. I went crazy with the Calvisham. I did blind ring, double speed. I put it all on. We, we spun that dice. <laughs> Shadow Hearts 2, I remember getting out of control with it, with the protagonist. Because after a while, I get kind of bored of the timing minigame of the protagonist. So I like that I could tweak it. We'll just tell Calvisham to get good. <laughs> the ring style. Then you could do a lot more damage. But I guess in some ways, you're going to make the game harder. Which is not a bad thing, necessarily. I don't think the game is inherently very difficult. But potentially reducing your damage by changing ring styles should lead to more interesting fights. Get out of here. I'm just upset that the third Shadow Hearts had a style where it ranked you on a boss fight, but not only did it rank you, but then it gave you like items to maintain your rank. So like for example, if you didn't get an S rank here, then you're not gonna get a good weapon, so you're not gonna have damage for the next time you need to do another boss. That felt really bad. I don't know what they were thinking with that, to be honest.
So I'm a little disappointed for sure. Oh, you'll you'll love the challenge mode stuff, Calvisham. Those are actually interesting. I don't think they're like super hard, but they make you think about it a little bit. I know I had to change my setups a couple times. Assuming you don't like delay on doing them, that is. And then when you when I say man mode and you understand what I'm talking about, or doing the man festival, call me in. I want to see how you do in that. I got robbed so hard on that run. So sad. Get out of here, go to Bulu. Hmm. Yeah, because I was kind of hoping to like be able to recommend another Shadow Hearts game to you. Maybe when the spiritual successor is ready. And they finish Penny Blood. I'll give it a shot. I technically have the uh, supportive game that came out. I haven't decided if I want to stream it before the other game comes out and then let some time pass, or stream it only after the other game comes out. Because I felt that way with uh, Euden Chronicles, which will start up at some point. I was just hoping for the roadmap stuff to be done so we can enjoy the full game. Oh, I didn't respect the halfway one. I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna respect it now. Not bad, not bad. Solid run. I believe we'll need a Viridian ID character. Um. And I have a couple of Viridian ID characters. Could bring in the Rock as seal. As we have one Force, I don't care. gonna put some items away. Yeah, I think my big issue with Shadow Hearts is I was experiencing some slowdown. Let's see how it goes. I mean, as long as somebody has a Viridian, I don't think it really matters. Put the Slicer away. That's a good pickup for today. So many materials. Uh, I mean, if you're not going to give it to another player, in theory, I'll hold on to it. For the shifter. That's something I usually just give out, to be honest. But if you want to get a collection for PDs or whatever, you can. Put some stuff away. Like that item box conspicuously out here. Okay. <laughs> you know what? There is a character I could bring in. It's very trolly, but I could bring the character in. It'll make chat smile and roll their eyes simultaneously. Next, we're gonna go to V101. We got the namesake of the hunt today, which is nice.
Oh, that's not the right character bank. Whoops, I trolled myself. Yeah, I think technically A is faster, but it has less. It's one of those weird ones where, like, looking up the grass assassin now while I'm doing this. Yeah, so they're recommending A over B or C, but honestly, B or C are still fine. So we, we can experiment, as it were. But yeah, Calvisham, if you are aware of any other games that do something a little different for, uh, oh, this is block one. That do something different for turn-based games. I would be kind of interested. Oh, I'm in such a weird place. Why did you send me here, game? This is like lobby three. I was banished to the ether temporarily. Try B. Yeah, otherwise I, I'm mostly just sticking to action games. If you have any action game recommendations, that's also fine. I'm looking for kind of like something similar-ish to East if we're talking about action. But otherwise, like I just I don't know. I'm not, I, my heart is not in like standard turn-based unless turn-based battles really really fast. Because sometimes if we're talking like old school RPGs, I just find them kind of boring. It's just like a lot of. Like, Final Fantasy 1 is just basically, you stock up 60 potions in your inventory, and you spam heal, and you spam fighters, and that's the whole game. I don't really find that very interesting or engaging mentally. Whereas, like, there's something like an Etrian Odyssey, where there's, like, you know, boss thresholds, they react to weaknesses, they react to, you know, certain things that you do, they possibly debuff if you perform certain actions. You know, if there's ones that are, like more complex it's nice or if it's turn-based but there's something else with it like radiant historia where you have like a grid of movement and you shove people around that's an example where it could be kind of fun i think people were trying to get me to play the mega man games at one point not like x i mean like the battle network sorry <laughs> should have been more specific there that could mean a lot of games assassination of the slime is real. Huh? Just... What is this setup that Soul Atomizer isn't there? Weird. I went to go use it, but then it didn't do anything. Something's not set up correctly on this character. That's annoying. Oh boy, I have to I have to redo his controls at some point. We'll figure that out in a moment. Because not being able to soul atomizer there is a big problem. Vagrant story. I'll make a note. You know what's really funny, Calvisham? I think I told the story before, but I I originally wanted to try Vagrant Story, so I asked family to pick it up, but they got really confused and they gave me Valkyrie profile instead. So to this day I've still not played Vagrant Story. Now at least I can cure myself of paralysis. 
Yeah, I'm not really big into crafting. I, I think it's... It's okay if it's not, like, hyper-required. Like, I still enjoy games like Rune Factory that have crafting, because I think so many of the other elements of the game carry it really hard. Uh, but the crafting is not my favorite part. There we go. I'm helping. Look at that. I almost killed something by myself. I did it. For future reference, did we select B? I'm thinking this comes into the room with the, the wall of lilies. I don't think this is C. I will slowly remember what these rooms look like. Erish Crimson Assassin. Yeah. I guess in some regards it could be interesting. I don't know. This is fiasco. Is it worth Viridian normal hunting? Ooh, photon drop. Brutal. Ah, uh, the rainbow room. Something's still not right with my setup. Let me see it again. Oh, I see what I did. We're on the wrong panel. That's awkward. I'll flip what I did in a moment. Yeah, it's important to have soul atomizers on like a quick command, or else you just kind of get overwhelmed with BS. The time you spend menuing is time the enemy has to redo it again. Okay, let's flip what we did. At this point, I don't know. I, I don't. I would have to think about what other games potentially to stream. I know, for example, they did a remake of things like The World Ends With You. I thought about if I wanted to play that kind of game on stream or not. Enemies. I am the decoy with my face. <laughs> Where the heck is my charged Vulcan in this list? Holy, we gotta refresh our list immediately. <laughs> I was like, that was like, what was that? Five items down? Get out of here. That's not happening. Yeah, I need to put some of these items away. Yeah, we could try the other one. Alright, what do I not need in the run? Funnier. Ray gun. So we'll do a few more. Talk to him just because. 
okay. It's okay to quit sometimes. Ever do the thing for the anti-dark ring? Um... No, I'm assuming you mean Terrell's ego. We could at some point try it. That requires a more dedicated party. That would probably need the assistance of a health lever or a Murphy with the challenge mode weapons. Getting a full clear on drills is kind of annoying. Could be fun to do at some point though, don't get me wrong. Rather just have dress plate, yeah, I agree with Hulk Leave. Maybe later, in the uh, anniversary, we could try it. I'll just write it down for now for remote. Yeah, I'm assuming we'll just do a similar quest. Mostly for my raw moral. Mm. Like, I'm just gonna hold still. If there's anything I should do there. Oh, I meant to ask Calvisham. Did you ever see me play uh, Guji on 3? That game is like a. Probably a 9 or a 10 out of 10 for me. It's probably one of the only games with, like, a stamina mechanic that I would play. Goodbye, Obelily. Uh, Gujian 3. I think it's, like, G-I-U-J-I-A-N. I never played the other games because they weren't translated at the time. I just jumped into it. I thought it was fine, just jumping into it. Yeah, it's a very Wuja style story. It's even talk about like like the cloud stuff. No worries, hopefully. It is a very, very... Oh, I got clipped. That's unfortunate. Disc animation trolled me. I did dodge it, but then I just get towards it. Rip. <laughs> Damn. I think we just need a Razond. If you Razond this room, it, get, it will stunlock the whole room. Yeah, I don't see a lot of people playing it, Calvisham, so that's why I was like... Because I, I put it up as the poll at one point. It's probably one of my favorite games back in 2019, I think I played it. I felt sad that I couldn't get the, the full beauty of the game on the stream because of like how intense the graphics were, if you leave it at high settings. But I really like the different environments, like the, the the shattered dimensions with the debris floating everywhere. You're climbing on the broken buildings, descending downwards into the prison, or like the uh, the perfect cloud kingdom, and then seeing the demons rain upon them from the sky. There's some really good visuals in that game, start to finish. Even just the tutorial itself, I remember being amazing. 
Like, just, like, the walls of the cherry blossoms and stuff like that. So good. Downside, though, it is subtitled. There's no English voice acting. So sometimes that's a deal breaker for people. For me, I don't care. I like it. But we'll put a little disclaimer there. But it was so good. Yeah, the combat in it is decent. It's not, like, super, super complex. But I like the dashing and everything else. Like, the ebb and flow, like, the light and heavy attacks. I like that you, you're basically... Your level up system is, like, a star system, and you start going towards certain abilities. You could choose to become more assassin-like, or... do some quick range attacks or whatever. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie, there there is one mini game in there that made me mad. I remember that. that. That's where the 9 or 10 comes in. Man, I did not like the woodcutting mini game. Hated that mini game. Yeah, I mean, if you think of like Wuxia, and if you don't know what that means, think like the Chinese martial art movies where the people are like jumping many, many stories in the air or. Potentially from the style of story where people are on flying swords, with the concept of like having the five elements, focusing on things like wood, metal, etc. Very nice. So I'll probably be playing that next year, Calvisham. <laughs> that that's on my list of I've been dying to replay it. No slime duping. Rip slimes. There we go. There's the some slime dupes. If nothing else, you can watch it later, Calvisha. <laughs> what are these enemies? And we'll do two more of these runs. And we'll move on. Yeah, I don't think it ever released on console. It's not like a console game. Run over. Uh-oh. What are you saving up for, Calvisha? What are your big ticket items? Seabed. Oh, Black Myth Wukong makes sense. I've heard some good things about it. I don't think I've heard of Phantom Blade Zero, though. I think that's the only one on the list. I'm not sure what that is offhand. Now Vishen's been dying for Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm assuming you're gonna get the game the moment it comes out, Calvisha, Monster Hunter. Now the other question is, are you planning on getting it on Steam or on console? I 
Thank you for joining us, Hokley. We'll have a free slot for the next quest. Oh, we have nobody with buffs. Debuff time. I don't even think I have a spare S red for this character. Welcome, Promethean. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Promethean and Shaw. You need again. Oof. Will depend on my PC, but it seems it's gonna come with crossplay. Nice, nice. Uh, I think I'm dead here. Yeah. Nobody, nobody helped me with the end of the room. I think it's over. <laughs> I was like, uh, I think I'm dead. I think there's a if and or but about that. No, it's not a second one hunt for Methian. Oops, I hit confirm. No, I don't. I don't want to do purple hunts. We're doing some checks for Crimson Assassins. That's about it. Although, is it worth going back? Maybe it is. If I have an S red in my character bank, I kind of want it. I know it's on my Hue cast. I don't think my Humar has one. Oh, he does. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. I was like, please. Hold on. At least I can enjoy some buff time. gonna be a very hard room. We don't have anybody locking down the middle. Oh boy. Ooh, free strap actually. That works. Unlock three of them, that's not terrible. What the? Did I get like re paralyzed mid soul? I thought it suck. There we go. I'm gonna give the, the team some time with my terrible Rebarda. I did it. And after this, we'll do some, probably some white tower. I'll switch characters. Probably be a force, or if somebody else is force, I'll just be Romarl into it. I was gonna say Calvisham. You were still saving up for a PC upgrade, right?
There we go. Starting to combo kill again. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Go the way we went last time with health lane. Say this is the most debuff thing I've done as a humor in a long time. Hopefully, end up getting a nice PC Calvishim. Got sidetracked by the uh, Lily Room. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Daggers are actually working decently well here. If my charge Vulcan just doesn't do enough due to my ATP and also not a good boost. That's actually combo killing. I like the charge Vulcan. My grass assassins. to try to help out. Hopefully he's been doing well. There's so many slimes here. I got nothing to do. I'm just gonna S red. I was like, there we go. Some of these. Well, there you go, Chad. I played as Humar. Round of applause. I did it. I even buffed. I buffed and debuffed as Humar. Never happens. I guess we'll switch over to White ID. I could be a force if somebody wants to help with Tower. We'll do probably four of the anniversary towers.
happy the way Force is getting used in a couple different areas. Wasn't sure originally where I would want to hunt him with him. And Tower was not my immediate thought with Force, but I guess with multiplayer it's not too bad. We have a free slot, so if anybody wants to hop in. We're just attempting to do some general unit hunts for Marco. So V801 and V101, we managed to get V801 for him today. Already got a red ring earlier. We're just kind of shoring up the characters at this point. Mm-hmm. So free slot for somebody that wants in for tower. We're going to do wide ID, which is chances for Psycho Wand. And also gives chances for B502. Yeah, he got a red ring the other night. It was one of our end of stream hunts. So we'll give, uh, <laughs> the red ring luck is real. I do get a lot of them. Streamer luck, yeah, I was gonna say. I don't, I don't find anything else when I play, but apparently Red Ring is there. Okay, we'll give a minute and then we'll uh, get started. I figure we give an easy opportunity for a force slot. We have more than enough damage. It's just nice to have another body. make a target emo for we need a fourth maybe oh well we gave a good chance for somebody to hop in yeah i would say of the different tower quests we could do i guess this is the closest i would call a favorite question mark i'm gonna go with the big old question mark there That what I'm thinking is additional chances for V502. Oops, my aim terrible. That what I'm thinking for additional V502 chances and potentially some other hunts. I was thinking, uh, why don't we try some endless episode two, one? So if somebody wants to just hop in a more generic quest. You know, I refoed, but it was too slow. I'm annoyed at myself. So annoying that I died there. I got distracted talking. I lost track of what wave I was on. I'm gonna focus for a second. Okay, now we're good. So, from the standpoint of it, I, I don't like tower. To be clear, I tolerate tower. There's a big difference. But I think, in terms of garbage bullshit spawns, this doesn't have a lot of them. Where there are a lot of other tower quests that I absolutely loathe, where I feel like go on for an eternity. Like Phantasmal World 4, I like the beginning parts of it, but man do I not like completing that quest. I really don't want to ever full clear that. That quest feels like it holds me hostage. I think we were there for like a half hour last time, like 35 minutes. That quest was like way too long for me. I was getting like physically uncomfortable with how long it was. Like, the fact that it's two sets of towers, I'm like, please, why is this so long? Need is a strong word. I actually don't want anything from tower, to be honest with you. I already have a V502, and I if I'm going to do a Psycho Wand hunt, it wouldn't be from tower. Unless I really just wanted to do orange gibbles resets, which I don't. I'd rather do blue ID, Del Beater. It's more for other people on stream. I would usually not pick tower willingly. 
Unless somebody was actively looking for something there. Because it has like a certain gear requirement that a lot of players can't meet. Unfortunately, the team here is, are kind of like more long-time players, so I'm less concerned about that. But I'm not going to get the same thing from like a 120 party or below. For people, for people that do have low-level characters that are like returning veterans, we'll call them. They'll come in with like the demon mech gun, or they'll come in with uh, the crazy BS in order to deal with the enemies. I'm going to lock down two of these enemies. I just need the team to deal with the other two. Oh no, team's not dealing with the other two. I need to run. I need to be outside of that sniping range. I got scared. The Del Lily will definitely kill me. Found that out one other run. So generally, my job here is just to debuff. If I can land demons, great. Saves a little bit of time. I think this quest is fine. I, I like this more than Sweep Up Operation 9. I think I would only play Sweep Up Operation 9 again if I had like a truly challenge mode pitted team. I, I don't find it that fun to do without it. I think there's just enough annoying spawns in that quest that I would like never willingly do that over some of the other options. Oops. Whatever, I debuffed. So it's more just like when we get into the control room. Okay, so just a reminder, there's two in front, then there's gonna be one in front, one in behind, and then there's gonna be one in middle, one in back. But right now we're we're facing the front, there's gonna be one behind us. Someone just needs to hit the one that's in front. So we'll have unspoken agreements as to who aims where. But just be aware that this is the spawn pattern here. Like once you know these things, like this wave is like pretty easy. Like I can stand in between here and hit both. Like, that, that's what my job is, so they don't have to worry about it. And it's like four Del Lilies into yada yada, whatever. Like, honestly, this quest is not that bad. It, it's like probably one of the better design power quests where I don't feel like I want to, like, scream. Oh, I forgot to say one in front, one in back. Usually it's the four separate party here, so it doesn't really matter, but... Uh, eventually, after the Del Lilies, I think it's the Del Beaters? So we'll be prepared to look in the front again after this. Like, I don't think there's a crazy amount of waves in this quest, so it's a little easier to remember it. Oh, it's Ilgil first, so Ilgil from Del Beater. The problem was still in the front regardless, so we're good. <laughs> Just like, listen, if, if the threat assessment didn't move... Oh, I'm gonna put a fireball down. I'm a little bit here. I think those don't actually charge in now that I'm viewing it more properly. That's fine. So when we come into the next area, just a warning, it's gonna be Epsilon. I'm gonna go in the middle, I'm gonna tank Epsilon. You don't have to do anything. I, I will literally tank it if you need me to. So I'm gonna keep it roughly in the center. After that, I'm going to be surrounded. Your rule of thumb, if you've not played this quest a lot before, is after every time we deal something with Epsilon, I will need you close to the center. Not in the center, but close to center. So the first time, we're going to get ambushed by Del Lilies. The second time, I'm going to get surrounded by Ilgil. And the third time, I need you to come in and give me a group hug. So we're going to get surrounded here. So generally speaking, if we had four people, we can uh, cover what's next. There's gonna be lilies in a triangular formation. I'm gonna try to hit them with Resond. So just get ready to attack from the outside. You should probably not be super dead center, but at the same time, I will need you on a couple of the waves to come in. He is sideways dashing at me, that is so rude. A couple of the waves, I'm gonna need assistance just to get them off me. So I know the next wave is gonna be Ilgil related. So once this Epsilon dies, I would need traps around me. I don't recommend standing where I'm standing. I'm the force, I can take the punishment, but I feel like from your perspective, there's gonna be a lot of annoying enemies on like the left and right side of the map, and you'll probably find it easier to deal with them. If you're not there. So just get ready, I'm gonna need you to trap. Thank you.
Perfect. Good job, team. Okay, you can split up if you want. I think ill gills come in the bottom left corner when the Epsilon wave comes in, but we got some time before that happens. And again, I would say this is like the closest to like a tower quest where like, I, I do feel like I played it and I went, you know, it's actually not that bad. It just, it, it does enough. Like there's mini bosses, it rewards you for positioning, but it's not like the hardest of punishments. And I like that as a force, there's somewhere I can stand. And then I become like the quote unquote damsel in distress when it's the uh, Epsilons. Okay, I think this might be the Ilgil waves. So just be careful of the Ilgil on the bottom left. Good call, good call. So from my position, I never need to move as a force. And that makes me happy. The less I have to remember about moving, the, better, the happier I am with the quest. So I feel like this quest caters to my style of quest. Where, you know, if you're a hunter or a ranger, there's a lot of movement you have to remember on the sides if you want to get good trapping. Also, remember after this, group hug me. Group hug me. Come in for a hug. Come in close, come in close. Oh, that was not Gafoe. That was dumb. You blame me on that one. I mispressed. Oh, I see what happened. Inverse the other character. I need to remember to fix that other character, so I don't do that again, out of muscle memory. For some reason, on my Raw Marl, who I was playing a lot, the Gafoe button was triangle, but it's actually square. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, so I have to do this. <clears throat> right, I'm going to use Razan here to slow down the Delilies. If you could just kill the Ilgils, I will be very happy. Never mind, I died. I'm no longer happy. <laughs> I need protection from the Ilgil, that's about it. Okay, we're basically in the final wave. Uh, I really want my mag to give me invincibility, thank you. I think he's trying to target me, but I was inside him, so I just kind of confused him. Don't mind me, I'll just kill the Gaigui. Here, um... No damage. Discovery man from box, nice. A little nice added touch for tower. And that's the whole run. That's it. Honestly, just remembering where the ill bills are are probably the big thing. And then uh, my reminder for the first room is it's two in front, one in back, and then I need to Gafoe to stop them from uh, charging the group. Those are like the only things I have to memorize in the whole quest, and that's honestly not that bad. Compared to like some of the other nonsense where it's like, oh, you're not in the four cardinals here, perish. The other one, it's more like you get knocked down and it's annoying it's about the extent of it. Anyway, if there's somebody who wants to hop in, well, thank you for the track lord. It's not a very hard quest. When you have a cast with you, life is very easy here. I'm gonna be debuffing them so most people can at least damage. There we go. Anyway, if I forget, we can also just twin blaze it. You don't need to time it with twin blaze. I have to time for Gafoe. So we'll give Chan a little bit of time if they'd like to hop in. Otherwise, we'll, uh, I guess continue onwards. Like, again, this is like one of the few quests I can say we could do in episode two where we don't really need a four man squad. We're not, like, super tight on traps either. Because I know a lot of the other Episode 2 quests require you to retrap or die on purpose. Which to me is more of kind of a failure in the quest, to be honest. I don't like it when you're forced to retrap. So quests that are like this length, which is perfect for me because I don't really like super long quests, uh, are perfect because the 20 freeze traps are more than enough to shut down every single wave. Or if you have two lower level characters, they can shut everything else down.
that's like, yeah, I, I don't mind grinding this quest out if it's for like the anniversary thing. So in a way, we're helping again with points. We're, we're going away from greedy runs briefly. And I think Tower deservedly gets a bad reputation, but I think quests like this, what it's based off of helps a lot with perception, where it's like, it's, it's not that bad. I don't think I would still like to single player this quest is still one of my complaints always because I, I'd like to be able to actually do the quest solo um, but I think as a multiplayer quest it's fine or nothing too heinous I'm gonna put down a little happy Del Beater at Gifoe, see how they like it there we go see that's what should have happened the previous time here, um, freeze. And see how I can just kind of stunlock them as a force? So it feels like I'm still somewhat useful in the run, which I cannot say for a lot of episode 2 quests, I'm gonna be real with you. Like, aside from buffing, I, I feel like I do, like, literally nothing. Because it's just kind of like a hell fest, and I'm, like, usually the worst character with hell. And, like, maybe I'll have to deal with a Gibbles or a Gaigui. Maybe. I am sad that there's no boxes on the way up, though. Yeah, we can slow them down with Rebarda, and we might even get a free Rebarda off of it. Oh. Well, that is now my third P502. Goodbye, Gibbles. I mean, at this rate, during the event, I might actually have enough for my casts. Need what, four? Although, to be honest, the Hugh Castile only needs V501. I, I, well, I guess she could hell it up. Hugh Cast, I don't super care what he has. He's pretty much never gonna hell. I don't even think he's gonna attribute, to be honest. I'll clean, er, Hugh Cast only cares about damage. Yeah. Rangers make sense. And I can rip Bowie here. So here's another example. There's three flowers, but I can completely stunlock them long distance. These are the kinds of things I want to see. If people are going to do quests, like, please let me do something as a force. I beg of you. <laughs> Just, like, please let me do something with force techniques, even if it's not damage. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, he does so much damage. It's like I'm using demons already, <laughs> right? Like, why, why do I need to swap weapons? Do you think a dull molem or whatever its name is is going to survive a full combo from Hugh Cass? Get out of here. Thing is so dead. Deader than dead. Alright, so we know there's gonna be two behind me and then two on the walkway. We just have to be careful about the ones on the walkway. So if the team comes over to where I am, I don't think the Ilgil will reach me. But otherwise, we have to worry about pulling the Ilgil that's over there. And I'll need a buddy. I'll need a buddy over here or I'm in trouble. An annoying moment where the flower just ignores freeze. I hate that. I hate that you can't hit them out of their shooting animation. I feel like I would be a lot happier with episode 2 if you could actually interrupt that animation. <laughs> if I had to make like an actual game changing thing, I would say to let me always interrupt that. So that way forces can just hard shut down those forever. Give forces a purpose. This equip. Well, welcome back, Helpley. As a reminder, two in front, then it's one in back, one in front, then one in middle, one in back. So I will freeze no matter what, so team can just pick pick their victim, I guess. If I happen to freeze them, also lure. So, I like that there's, like, a couple of examples where, like, I like the murder flowers in close range and not really super spread out, because it lets me as a force player do something. Or at least if they, you know, spawn at a distance. 
If they're still within Rafoe range of each other, I'm mostly happy with that too. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I realize you're gonna do the uh, dark flow there. But we know it's now four Del Lilies, then there's an Ilgil in front of me, so I'll need help with the Ilgil in the front after this. Remote got too close, bodied. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care at all about the guy Gui. The guy Gui can do whatever they want. I'm like, listen, they they aren't ill gil. I don't care. Yeah, I think these guys just don't hit anybody if I don't do anything. Yeah, they don't do anything. So I like that even though the Epsilon spawns in this room, like, we can choose who it targets by, like, who comes in the room first. It's kind of nice. Like, I'm gonna make it target me. That way chat can just do whatever they want for a bit. Then chat can help me later with the Del Lilies. I like that kind of, that, that push and pull cycle with them. I don't know what quest this one is specifically based off of, but I do like it. I don't know if I would like the full version of the other quest. We'll see. I'll try not to heal too much from this point forward. I will try to stun luck with Razan, though. Thank you, Razan. Thank you for giving me something to do as a force here. Tough time. Bagweez are dead. Might as well as regen TP. Remember, I'll need assistance after this. I like the paralysis to follow up with it. Such a good idea. Debuff them the best that I could. I like this room style specifically. Oops. There we go, landed the demons. Come on, Mag Invincibility. Badge out of Ogil, oof. Remember, we'll, we'll group hug, but for real this time. There we go. That's what I should have done the previous time. That wasn't my bad. Yeah, like, these rooms aren't too threatening. I need to remember where the double Ilgil wave is. Maybe it's, like, one more after this? I need to remember how this one spawns. Oh no, it's right here. Okay, that's pretty quick. So ch just help me with the Ilgils. You can ignore the Del Lilies. I, I have them some though. <laughs> there we go. Now you can murder them. The Ilgils scare me. Del Lilies, I don't care about. I'm definitely gonna Zalore. Might be able to get some pot shots on them. He's gonna be body blocking me and or confusing. Oh no. What I'm worried about. Ooh, finally invincibility. I needed that earlier. That's Deepa.
Thank you. That wasn't too bad. Then we'll do two more. See that? We're helping the anniversary quest. We did a lot of greedy runs after doing a lot of selfless runs. We're balancing it out. We're doing the ones that people don't do. And then Striker with 20 hit. Nice. Makes sense for my raw conceal to have it. She was kind of one of the characters I envisioned using a lot of specials. Now I just really need to get some challenge mode weapons to bring her game up a little bit. So if I just want to hard shut down everything I could in theory. A combination of like a hit spread needle plus I don't know some demons. I think she'd be pretty well rounded. Okay, so we still have a free slot for anybody that wants to join in. We'll go until about 7.30, so we'll do two more. Give some fair chances and also help the points. Speaking of which, I haven't even looked at the points since it hit 8,000. Where are we at? Let's do a quick check. Tower is one of the lowest at 8,541. The next lowest is August Atrocity 1, and literally everything else is higher. Yeah. We're helping with one of the lower ones while still doing a good hunt. But yeah, that's 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 a good save. I think so far the anniversary event is now starting to pay off for me a little bit. Now that I've gotten more than one V502, I think I'm in a good place. So we got a red ring, which we would do from that amount of gameplay, I think, anyway, given, given our drop rate on stream. Okay. We'll give another 10 or 15 seconds. If somebody says something in the chat, we'll wait a bit longer. Yeah, for this particular run, I feel like Bringer's Rifle, plus having the... Uh, <laughs> the Hugh Neural Mag, which I need to remember to give Dimates. Chat should yell at me if I forget to beat this thing. One day I'm gonna put this at 100. <laughs> 100 power. We'll get up there. Assuming nobody wanted in. On Psycho 1. <laughs> at least we could say we did Psycho 1 hunts today. We did B801, we did B101, we did B502. Thinking about an endless. It could technically also be episode one. We might still get more chances at B502. We've seen how crazy uh, White ID is in certain areas. Technically, we might get some chances at, uh, I think White ID's Heaven Striker Seabed, if I remember correctly. Not turned fast enough there. Enjoy the flame. That's a quest where there's potentially a lot of really interesting drops across the board. Because I do think White Temple is mostly fine. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, there we go. Chat saving me there. <laughs> the Death Scythe was millimeters from hitting me. That was the hard save from chat. I just looked death in the face and just kept attacking. I'm like, I'm committing. I'm committing hard. See, I'm just looking to kind of touch up my gameplay here a little bit more. But I think, you know, this... I, I might be able to actually say that I can run this quest pretty well. 
There's not many quests I feel confident in saying, like, I have the proper strategies. I think this is one of them, to be honest with you. There's only a couple times, like, I could probably swap a little more with weapons, but, like, in terms of understanding the enemy positions, I think this is up there with Massive Attack B, where I just understand what it wants. And I know how to adapt if we don't have a perfect team. Which I can't say with all the runs that we do. Definitely don't want to say that for most of the runs we do, to be honest. I don't feel like I'm at that level. It would be disingenuous to say that I feel like I'm a master of the run. This run, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. That's all that matters. So that sneaky little shot in between my Razans. The jerk. I like that if you stand over here, the other Delvedar doesn't do anything. Ooh. Double demons. I like how this character has literally consistently landed demons better than my raw moral. It's kind of BS. <laughs> like, like, he really shouldn't by all stretches the imagination, yet statistically he has literally missed less than she has by a lot. It's not even close how much better he has been at demons. Nice lockdown. Appreciate it, team. Go Marco, save some items. Eden time. Yeah, I know the Gibbles will tend to prioritize me because I'm a male character and I'm a force. So I can purposely lure them away from the Rangers. That's that kind of goes into like mini AI manipulation. Feels good. Stay in the middle and deal with them. Get my TP. This is. anything to say more about this particular quest. I, I think this is this quest is actually well done. It almost could have been real bad. How many quests would you ever say that you feel comfortable doing like a two man or a three man into tower? I don't think many. Unless the answer is I have five challenge mode weapons and level 200 or whatever. This is just right. A double freeze. My double leaders. I can see what people mean about, like, not wanting rest as much in tower, get, like, the HP manipulation. Just let me know if you're going for the minip. I have such low health that I auto minip, so I just, as long as I'm at full health, I automatically go here. Here's another example where I enjoy the low HP, because high HP does not benefit me in tower. I'd rather be at the point where a simple attack will give me the proc. I just have a bad mag. Like, that's the only reason we're not seeing it proc, like, every single time. But trust me, if I could, I would lock my health in at, like, 9, 920 and just never let it ever level again. I'll be like, gladly take my HP away, please. I don't need it. 
If I stand up and get meleeed because I don't get knocked down, I'm going to die. I'm a force. There we go. <clears throat> I like that I'm actually using Glide Divine a bit more, but showing that I'm branching out to how I played the force earlier. I oh, finally got invincibility. Oh, Grizzly got another item. I think they're, st they're still doing Lava Cannon, so I'm assuming that's Blue ID. We talked about this before. There's only two IDs that get that. I'm, I'm imagining that they're going for Heaven Punisher or whatever. I have Leech Out's assistance. I'll freeze them a little bit with Rivarda. Perfect. Nice paralysis. Love to see it. I'm gonna try to slow them down with some freezes. There we go. Getting trolled. I'm not landing any of my demons now. I praised demons earlier. Demons giveth and demoth taketh away. I'm gonna get bodied here, I think. Ouch. Leave me alone. Dunlock. On demons. There we go. I did my job and landed a demon. Group hug, group hug. There we go. Buffs in the group. Got the demon proc. And now I know it's going to be a wave into the Ilgil. So if team helps me with the Ilgil after this one, I'd be appreciative. Oh boy, I'm dead. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm not at full health, GG. I bodied team. Revive me. Thank you. Scary. I shouldn't have done that. That's fine. That was such a greedy buff. I don't know why I went for that. It's not needed. They're so annoying. Oh, you actually gave me invincibility. Thank you, Mac. Did it. Or was it just left to die against the guy we on demons? There we go. I was gonna say the power actually matters for killing Epsilon. I'm gonna keep leveling it. Okay, one more after this, and we'll switch what we do. And in the quest, add some points. There are a ton of people in this lobby. What is happening? <laughs> Again, I almost never see people in block two. There's like one or two stragglers. To see like seven people in the lobby. Like, hello. <laughs> Especially with the, uh, the lobby increases across the board. It's a bit surprising for me to see. Sure thing, Marco. Oh, we 
might be doing some solo adventures after this. Let's go to Tower one last time then. I was figuring if people wanted to do some endless, I would do it, but I have literally nobody with me. I don't really want a single player in endless. Say. That one's not my fault. If you step in front of me, the Kapoe is not gonna go that far. I did stop them though. Hello, Ogil. I'm gonna stop you from turning. They can't leave. Nice. Debuff, stun lock, get a demon, stun lock again. Guy, we kill range. Miss Freeze Trail. So we're seeing the slow adaptation. There's definitely a lot that hunters can do, don't get me wrong, but from a force perspective, I'm playing with people that don't know any of the spawns. I feel like I'm almost in total control of the run. There's only like a couple times where I'm like, yeah, I definitely need assistance. Otherwise, good positioning. Deals with the enemies very quickly. Kill my own Gaigui, nice. Oh no. Oh, get the Ilgil off me. There we go. That works. runneth over again. Back to debuffs. Rolled by the recons. Goodbye. Chat is just defeating them right now. I almost feel bad for them. Then they're murder flowers. Then I no longer feel bad. Oh, got the demons again. Thank you, demons. Fast kill brought to you by demons. Yeah, there we go. Shaped like 4k all. Like two entire combos less needed to kill. I wonder if the Confused Trap would let them melee themselves to death. I can't say I've ever tried to let them do that. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna slow them down. 
of buff time. Demons betrayed me, but that's fine. let them do more of their animation before trying a freeze attempt. got them with demon close. I got two. Better than nothing. There we go. Now that we're down to two, I can safely the lore, speed things up a little bit. Get run over anyway. Rip me. Gen some TP because I can. There we go. Uh, let's say if you could go revive. You know what? I'll go revive. Bonk. On demons. There we go. Got photon drop, that's kind of brutal. It made me smile though. A group hug. I tried to time that as tight as possible. I almost scared myself there. Yeah, I'll move with the old girl. Thank you. So I got the other one. Almost got the demons out in time. I've got mag invincibility now. I'm gonna try to demon. That'll save the team a lot of time, speed of which. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, there we go. Worse than the damage through. Yeah, almost got it down to nine minutes with just three people. Solid job from the team. 
127,000 experience per clear is pretty good. Definitely the double experience helps, I will say. I don't know if I'd be happy with this quest without the anniversary boost, but... That's fun. Okay, this character's been putting in at the work. You're wide open! Thank you, Mass Cats, for the follow. Hopefully you're doing well today. I think that'll be the it for the tower run. Finally caught a stream. Glad you were able to. We're going to see what people are interested in. Potentially might just do a general high value hunt for episode 1 and episode 2. Is it even beat? Is even beat though. Hmm. I'll think about it. Do you have an parameter interested in a Cannon Rouge? We could do a, hunt, a few hunts for Cannon Rouge before we go into that, since it is even beat. That would just be surface red. As long as somebody brings a red ID, or I could bring a red ID, but then I don't have pew pew laser. No worries, Remote. It was good having you around. Also, have a good night, Marco. Hopefully you get some rest. I'm gonna say in Parameter, do you have a red ID character, or do you need me to be red ID? Oh, you got a forest? Nice. Which case? Get a little bit of extra experience on the third character I wanted to eventually get close to 180. So yeah, so far this event has been really good at catching people up. I think we'll do probably three red ID surface runs for people that want to hop into some episode four. There's a lot of games in the block two. hanging out. They're slow down again. So if there are people that want to run or do runs with me, by all means, I don't really care about your gear level at all. We're looking just to fill slot. You want to get some equivalency of power level ups. Today is your very lucky day. We're sitting in block two. You let us know in Twitch chat, we'll wait a little bit. Target step up, pretty much. I think Chris will be joining us in the evening. He said he was interested. Mascats, I may join. You're more than welcome, Mascats. As long as you're a character in Ultimate, we can take you there. As I said before, our intent is to help people get new items. I've been going through... I think I've asked almost everybody at this point what items they've hunted for. So we helped Marco earlier. Remote batteries looking for Red Ring and Excals. So we'll try to get more of those next time remote battery is in. Hell cleave, I just have yellow CCC, purple mines, and red NMU3. Hello, minus X. Hope you're doing well. 
gathering some items. <clears throat> there we go. Welcome, Mass Cats. I will try to get your name in the credits in the YouTube videos. I do apologize if I leave you off. I do try to skim the video and catch people's names. But we've been doing a ton, a ton of PSO lately, so I do apologize if I miss them the YouTube when it gets uploaded later. It's definitely not intended. I do, I do try, but there's a lot to go through. I think we're mostly good to go. What I'm gonna try to do, move this. I'm only two accuracy from Cap. Wonder. I think with this setup, I think I can go wear a heavenly ability now. It helps think you get a Psycho Wand. I don't know if that'll happen. You're more than welcome to hop in minus. We got a free slot. And now that I've leveled so much, I can actually use a Heavenly ability to give myself accuracy. So now my character stats are actually looking pretty decent. I think chat would agree. Like, that was a pretty big upgrade. I'm happy to put away yet another Heavenly Arms for a future character. Which will make the uh, All Ranger rush at some point pretty easy. That boosted my MST, boosted my luck, boosted my attack, all of which I need, even if I'm doing pew pew laser. That was a significant upgrade. And once I get even more accuracy, I could just do a Centurion ability and cap everything. And have pretty much capped MST by the time I'm around 170. Probably even 165 I might be capped. And yeah, we'll do some surface runs. So we'll have uh, a parameter just select the event crater. We'll put some points in that. I'm going to be delivering the pew pew for a little bit. And if there's anything you're looking for, mass cats, let me know. I don't mind delaying my own personal hunts. I'm not in a rush. I do a little bit every day since I'm looking for mostly the commonly hunt items at this point. Just better drops. Cannon Rouge being one of them. So I'm not going to say no to a Cannon Rouge. I'm going to go need some good ones. There we go. I think I'm already doing five more damage a laser. Pretty good. Pew pew. Buy every enemy. Yeah, between a force and a pew pew laser, I think most of these lizards are just done. That makes ranger life very easy. And we might end up going for an Excal by doing some endless episode one. Let's we'll see. I don't know if we'll force Endless Episode 2 on the current team, but Endless Episode 1 is fine. I think they do okay. Yeah, Endless Episode 2 requires definitely, like, there has to be a cast. There needs to be a demon user. Oh, we recruited somebody, according to Sweet in just then. Episode 1 is more like, and you damage. <laughs> and that'll come with levels. Pew pew pew. Nice, easy way to level. Most people are looking for things like Cannon Rouges. The nice thing, at least if we do Endless Episode 1, that will be another chance at uh, Excalibur, as well as uh, E101. And there's like small chances of something nice, on top of tons of Ubers, of course. But who knows, maybe we'll get a Heaven Punisher from the Grass Assassin. We did that one time. But at least I could say I did Psycho 1 hunts today. We didn't do Seabed Psycho 1 hunts, but we did the Tower Psycho 1 hunts. So, at least we could say we put in some effort. 
Okay, I want everybody to come near me, hopefully. This might be in danger. Yeah, I like how that's like the perfect distance so that they... You don't even have to give Bowie at that distance. I'll do it anyway, just to potentially stagger them. It is nice. So close. Goodbye, other door phone. Nice, gold badge. The Can of Rouge is a pretty big upgrade for most rangers, so it makes sense to, you know, go for some of the common hunts. Especially for newer players that might not have a good one. Or might not have one at all. Or in my case, <laughs> I've been playing a while, but they just they just don't draw. No worries, Katsy. You're doing fine. Fun should have hit me. I'm surprised he didn't. I guess the Gavoe saved me. Normally I get bodied for forgetting about him. On the plus side, I'm critting a bit more. Which helps with damage against the Dorfon. There we go. Here's the big cannon rouge alley. Hopefully it drops for somebody here. That's a no, unfortunately. There we go. Yeah, now, now I'm feeling pretty good about using this character for solo white ID runs. I have above 11,000 ATP. My luck bonus is basically fixed. The odds of me clearing with the charge arm have gone up pretty significantly. Also, I forgot to state about the Gafoe there. My bad. Don't worry, we'll, we'll try again and we'll make sure to uh, get Bowie there. So it's, it's a little awkward because it's like a zoo wave into it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I need to bring Paralysis. Would be able to do it? We definitely need some kind of lockdown. I'm just set up for Pew Pew Lasers. I could possibly sacrifice to hit it. Paralysis does save a lot of time there. I sadly don't have, like, a... This character doesn't even have a spread needle on them. I'll have to see if I got one later. Thank you, whoever paralyzed. There we go. Now we're smoothing out. <laughs> so I'm like, I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but this character is kitted to do MST. So most of their stats are kind of weird at the moment. I just wanted to go pew, 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 and beat the whole wave. That way for people that are more dedicated at paralysis, like Cass would do it. Chance of Cannon Rouge. Come on, Babudas. Reward the team. Get out of here, Babudas. Mr. Rayman's not a bad reward, I guess. If they drop him with any hit percentage, that would be pretty huge, actually. That poor ass 
Stark. I'm gonna go bully him. Dramatic battle music as it's just an absolute massacre of lasers, fire, and gunshots. Poor enemies. See the when you see a wave of all Astarks, we're gonna gather on the left side of the map. So I'll do a little hello. For those that haven't seen the quest before. We need to make sure to be somewhat close together. For people that have spread needle, they might be able to paralyze all the dwarfons in one shot, which would be really sick. That'll be kind of difficult without a V5 unit. But anything we can paralyze is good. Oh yeah, we're gonna go to the left. Finish them off now. I'm gonna try to delay a fireball here. Delay, press, get ready for the, the incoming swarm. You got paralyzed. This might work. I can slow them down with a couple laser shots. Yeah, there we go. Good lockdown, good lockdown. We got almost all of them. We can focus on damage now, I think. Good job. Worth a decent amount of experience. I'm gonna go see if I have a spread needle just to assist with paralysis. And if so, I'm gonna try to equip a V5 unit. I guess it's good we got the victory music for Suikin in, one of them. I do have a spread needle. Inquiry is full. Uh, what the going I need? I'm gonna wait till he for now. Spread needle. Sadly, probably put my heavenly away. And then I actually put the photon crystal away. That should work. Then I can have a floating vital laser in my inventory. Oh, that makes it even easier. So we're gonna equip a V502 to make life a bit easier. We're only, we're only gonna pop into it when we truly need it. Otherwise, uh, see how it goes. I'd rather DPS with lasers. I actually don't need to be at full accuracy when going pew pew build. No, it's not like the end of the world. It's Skyly, his SJS. You mean my Skyly, or just in general? Well, welcome, Bombs up. Hope you're doing well. Skyly's our team captain. Oh, I'm not aware. Is I, I have Knight Skyly. Guess that's why I got confused. <laughs> and Skyly's also the ID. We'll just wait for everybody to pop in.
Another YouTuber? Oh, yeah, I tend not to look up other people. Do you have any resources for new players new to multiplayer? Uh... What kind of things are you looking for for new to multiplayer? We have our own guides for, like, items, and we talk about, like, the, the journey to ultimate. We have a section ID thing that's currently Discord only, talking about, like, value hunts. You can hop in minus X. Just, just come- just assume that you're in until somebody go, wants it. That way we can get started. So we have, like, our own list of things. We have some things on our personal Discord. This your first character, just afraid of messing something up? No worries. I was gonna say, for the most part, it's hard to quote-unquote mess them up. Green ID is pretty solid for a ranger. I think it was looking at your character, yeah. So you could still do things like, uh, towards the future in episode 1, and you could still do episode 4 stuff. Play with Slingshot all the time, nice, nice. Yeah, we, we talk about, uh, potentially things to go for, so if you're just looking for items or trying to figure out what to do, we cover a lot of that in the guides. <laughs> Given long enough, you can change your ID anyway due to item changes. You're not wrong, Hillcleave. We got a few of those to think about. I would say if you're more just looking for what items to look for, I mean, I could just openly answer the question. Like, you can see I'm currently using something known as a Heaven Striker, which is the QP laser. I have combined that with a mag using the Heaven Striker coat combo to get something called the Striker Unit Mag, and that allows me to pew pew laser. Romars are also capable of doing so. Where they kind of benefit in strength is they are looking for things like your classic you know, 50 hit charge arms, you're looking for probably a melee weapon to help deal with Volt Off, so like a Galatine or Excalibur is good. Or if you're looking in the drop charts, it'll be lame to Argent. Otherwise, your character just kind of wants most of the standard Ranger things. So I would say so far, even if you mess up materials, there's a server command to reset your materials. And generally speaking, once you're at a high level, it's not super hard to get materials again. Like, we were looking at the point where all we do is collect materials during this anniversary event, and we're, we are well over 80 power materials. And I don't even consider myself, like, a super hard grinder of the event. Now, granted, some of that assumes, you know, we're doing ultimate, you know, versus, like, a totally brand new character doing solo stuff. But, uh, you'll be surprised at how much you get in multiplayer compared to single player. If following the wiki, it's a big help. I think, for the most part, the wiki's pretty good. I think they cleaned up some of my bigger complaints with it. But, yeah, we, we go into a lot of depth with, uh, item hunts, especially if you're looking for... Uh, what to do at lower levels. But we have a very, very, very big guide coming up that I'm always, like, updating and tweaking based off of, like, new findings to help with other players. So we're gathering, for example, what quests are recommended for IDs uh, for any given section ID. We've done a couple of videos before uh, in our YouTube talking about, like, these are green ID ones. So by all means, if you if you uh, do exclamation mark Discord, you are more than welcome to do it. I don't have the direct link to the guide offhand, but our Discord has it in a thread under the PSO. If you're more than welcome to browse through it, it is like 95% there anyway. There's just a couple of things I just want to add more details to. It's a very big guide, but it covers a lot of things. If you're just looking for general tips on how to play the game, we actually have a video for that already. We cover that in a lot of detail. But we also cover that within a Google Doc, which I think is slightly more up to date. I guess I got more in this, too. So if you're looking to understand things, like where we're talking about things like slime duping, if you don't know what those kinds of things are or the accuracy glitch, we have a document covering a lot of those. So I definitely would recommend kind of browsing through some of that since that will definitely be a way to potentially step up the game without necessarily needing equipment. As we talked about it on stream a couple times, it's not necessarily you need, like, 
ultra endgame gear to do well. It's just knowing about, like, the weird little quirks about the game. Like how, for example, you can use a fire trap to instantly kill slimes regardless of level if you hit where they spawn. Or if you attack three times and then use a fire trap, you'll split a slime. Or you can use a technique to split them. So that way, if you want to get extra badges or you want to get extra chances at rare slime, it just kind of free things to do while you're waiting in some quests. But like those little things will lead to like a big quality of life improvement. And then whenever we play stuff like episode one and I'm playing force, I try to show how exploitable walls are in early episode one to the point you can do box checks and kill enemies in completely separate rooms, even though normally you can't target them. So, hopefully that kind of stuff will help you. I definitely recommend just kind of browsing through some of the tip sections. It's up to you how much you would want to dive into the item sections. That's more if you just had general questions on hunts. Buff here. Really? I'm a troll. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna help a little more with lockdown this time. They lose like a tiny bit of damage, but honestly, it's not any different than just playing with my old heavenly arm setup. Just remember, in the upcoming wave, we'll need a uh, Gifoe. So pretty much as soon as the zoo is dead, just get ready to uh, clump together and believe in the Gifoe. We don't want to hit it too early, since that'll cause them to be far apart. Let's see what happens. I'm going to do a tight little Gifoe here. Really? I missed the 131%? Damn. Did we just actually say this is unlucky? I had V502 on, right? Did I really miss that? Does Chad want to calculate the odds of a resistance 32 whipping like that? That is brutal. Come on, it's supposed to be 50% higher. Game, please. The only thing you can mess up is the slot your character's in, that's true. I feel like I got trolled by Spread Noodle there, chat. I know we don't have like the highest possible rest chance, but even then it should just be it should be like close to 60%, right? It's like a coin flip. Because it's not it's not 80, because it's not the, the better version. It's like 63 or 64, minus 34. I guess it's more like 45. This is slightly worse than a coin flip. Oh, I forgot. My brain was thinking about the other quest there, my bad. Unfortunate. Am I gonna go have to fetch a kunai out of the bank? This is ridiculous how often this is whiffed. Him, please. There we go. I'm full of rage out. Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask on stream. Always appreciate having another topic to mention as we murder these babudas. We'll do... Let's see two more of these. And we'll move on to a different quest. That way you can say I took advantage of the even beat. Here. 
kind of how I wanted to angle it. There we go. That's like. Bronze badge. Yeah, being able to have like over 1100 ATP should be really fun for clears and solo now. If I really need to push her level higher, now I can do so during the event when I'm by myself. I know, Calvishim, you walk away, the bots come in, they sense you were gone. There we go, ban that bot. Report him, Calvishim, terminate him. It's all group up. I know, Calvation, it's so ridiculous. There we go. How come that worked that time, but not the other time? Whatever. There we go. That's how that should normally go, by the way. Much better. Silliness. end up getting a Kander Rouge for somebody here. This character is definitely climbing in levels. I think she was low 120s when the event began, and she's already almost 150. So it definitely feels like a lot of my ults are getting powered up. And then I think Hellcleave, maybe we can plan for next week. We'll do a, uh, we'll make a cast or something. Do the CCC Ranger nonsense. Just hell needle everything. Shift a D shift a D bad Ryuker. Nice little icon there. Back to the pew pew. And this weapon is so fun. Yeah, generally the big hunt for newer players. I would recommend if you don't know about it already, make sure you have a ranger wall. And eventually upgrade that into Red Ring. Ranger Wall is like an absolute lifesaver. That thing is like so ridiculously good, and it's amazing they could wear it at like level 30. So the level requirements are also super low. Downside, tedious mini games needed to unlock it. But oh well. I guess you could always trade for it if you really don't feel like doing them. Goodbye, Satellite Lizard.
by enemies. Yeah, fortunately there's not really like a ton of bonds to talk about in this one. Mostly just remember where the door fawns are. That's about it. Slingshot already. 157. Oh, Cannon Rouge. Hello, Cannon Rouge. There we go. Namesake of the run has been found. So I guess in a way, at least it paid off to do. Just be careful after this wave, it's going to be Dwarfong. You potentially stay in the middle, but you'll need a Gafoe to protect yourself. So if you do find yourself out of position, just Gafoe. There we go. Good shutdown of the Dwarfongs. There we go, teamwork. Goodbye, Rappies. How those back three died before the others on my screen? I have no idea. If chat has any ideas why that just happened, by all means, I don't I don't understand how laser desync them like that, but sure. Like did something else hit them? Like cause nobody was near me on my minimap. I'm not even sure how that happened. It's like they fell down dead like I made them spooked, but they didn't run. How else would I kill them like four hits early with laser? Very weird. Out of range. There we go. Critting for a thousand already? I believe my connection says minus X. I don't know, it was very weird. I honestly want to go rewatch that. I've never seen that happen before. Ooh, nice little cannon rouge pickup for. And with hit? Nice. Damn, I was gonna say, this has been a good decision. Definitely no regrets doing this quest now. Chat's getting some profits. We'll do one more to try to get additional profits, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, I got lasered. split up so it's hard to spread needle but we got there in the end that's all that matters speaking of all that matters let's see if i can do this without getting hit like a big dummy back back up a little bit oh we got the double wait how did it even hit somebody what what? Desync, please. <laughs> please, they're paralyzed. They should be able to hit people. What is this? Uh oh, team's dying to paralyze Dorfons. Question mark. DSO, please. I was gonna say, wow. Somebody wants to clip that. That was that, that was the most deadly paralyzed Dorfon I've ever seen. What's going on? A killing spree. Holy.
Dorfon means serious business. Okay, another chance at Cannon Rouge here. This is usually the other room. This is usually the spawn if we get Cannon Rouge to come in, if not the other one. Otherwise, we still have a couple more, ch more chances in the run. It's not a big deal. Got bullied by Zoo. Just throwing off my tempo. Oh, but how is he moving? He was paralyzed. <laughs> but he was paralyzed. <laughs> I don't understand. I had him in the stun lock forever. It wasn't even ambiguous. I guess he didn't spawn on your screen or something? And then he spawned in and ignored his paralysis? If so, that's very cheaty if that's what happened. Because I legit was just shooting them over and over again. Yeah, let's do this. That's so sad if it was going on a rampage on other people's connections. Jeez. In theory, it could still drop a uh, Kenim Rouge here. Everybody grouped up, get some freezes going. He ran back. Interesting. Oh no, that Ryuker is in a scary spot. I don't like that. Gonna put out a fireball, switch to spread needle. Make sure I don't accidentally teleport. Murdered our way through that. Mad cats at 131. <laughs> I always get scared. I'm like, like, don't press power attack. Don't ever press power attack. Okay. So we'll do one more. Yeah, it's nice to see this character getting really strong. Just for solo play, I'm almost at max ATP and luck, so forest and stuff like that would be very easy. So if anybody's looking for anything in particular, let me know. Otherwise, after this, I'll pick a quest. There's always the classic red ring, of course. Sadly, it only came with machine. Uh, oh well, at least it is some hit percentage, though. That'll help guarantee some power attacks for Ramar and Ramarl across all bosses. Ramar needing it less, of course. Makes a small difference against a uh, worm boss if you're using that to kill. Punisher, but who isn't? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going for Heaven Punisher. I'm like, no thanks. I don't think it really does anything to the run that Heaven Striker doesn't do already. 
The most it really does is it gives cast an option for uh, balls to shoot the spinners without needing the uh, striker unit. I think initial click would be cool. Rambling may got a few, but none with hit. I'll make a no regardless. Let's add to minus X. So minus X, we can remove the question marks. Ignition Cloak. Heaven Punisher, which I think is some ult drops on other things. So, there is technically a run we could do for Heaven Punisher <clears throat> that I wouldn't mind doing, but it wouldn't be the focus of the run. Oh, Heaven Striker. Oh, Heaven Striker's fine. Yeah, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Because <laughs> I'm like, Heaven Punisher is very niche. That's more to show off than anything else. Yeah, Evan Striker's pretty good. I don't think I'll do any of those tonight, since we did that earlier today already. Got Red Ring on the first run. Well, if you ever if you ever make more than one character, you'll be finding you'll need a lot of them. In particular, when you're looking to cover gaps in section IDs, you'll probably find over time if you play, you will end up liking Hunter, probably Hugh Cast for specific runs, and even among the human characters, you'll find yourself saying, oh, I want Ron Marl, and then other runs, you're like, nah, I need traps, because the team doesn't have it, let me bring Raw Cast. Even among, like, similar class types, you'll probably find scenarios to switch. Another cannon move? All zero. All. I was gonna say, Mad Cats. Did you have a uh, cannon rouge? My curiosity. Ooh, that barely stopped. Nice, nice. Just making sure. I saw you with a, a nice range of weapons, which is pretty good for single player. Now I just need my first red ring? Oh no. Have you not received a red ring so far? Hmm. Maybe we'll have to fix that. <laughs> okay, we might have to fix that then. Disco Brave Man. All zero Disco Brave Man. Gross. Ew. <coughs> Put that back in the trash. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Well... We're definitely going to be doing that in a little bit, for sure. I want to do one more set of quests before we do the TTF grind, though. So I'd say with the current quest, I don't think I want to do Endless 2, but Endless 1 should probably be fine. We've been leveling up a little bit. Then if we want, we could do some falls afterwards. I'll bring in the Hue cast. Actually, no, I can't. I'm gonna bring in a raw cast. I correct myself. And that has an off chance for Heaven Punisher, on top of Lame to Arjun and a few other things. damage for the team. We should be good here. So many spread needles have been whipped out. We're like, listen, Thorfinn's not going anywhere. Poor Dorf Dorfinn entered the no fun zone. Hmm. Yeah, let's once we wrap up this quest, we'll do endless until let's say about nine o'clock, and then we'll just do a lot of TTF. How's that in parameter? 
probably like 9, or maybe like 9.05. We'll, we'll see how the run breaks down. And then I'll, I'll bring in a uh, Yellow Boss Rock Hass to uh, decimate Endless. I will probably ignore the little challenges it, it gives, but you're more than welcome to aim for them. Since my goal is to purposely fail so I don't fight Falls as Yellow ID because it doesn't drop anything. Plus, it could be kind of hard to do the don't get hit challenge and the don't use bunny challenge unless everybody has, like, a really good get set of berserk and charge items and high defense. Just not really expected for new players. It's good if they can do it, but not expecting it. Shut down that wave pretty nicely. Oops, had the right weapon equipped. Ew. On Cannon Rouge. I still have yet to ever see one with hit. I have not rolled any with above, I think it was 25 ABs. There's a lot of room for improvement for my Cannon Rouge. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Goodbye, enemy. Goodbye, zoo. Realize the one. I knocked down, unfortunate. Really? With the gun? There we go. I think it's just time to end them. <laughs> just put him down with gunshots. Miller's found Seal J Sword. Nice. Or Camellia, excuse me. Yeah, let's see what shenanigans happen when I do it this time. I'm gonna back up. Oh, that works. Okay, no more deadly paralyzed dwarf on. That's good. That thing was going on a killing spree, though. It's kind of insane. Goodbye, satellite lizards. Ray gun with 40 hit, no special. That's so sad. So many pew pew lasers. And from here to get a good shot at them. like at the very edge of my range. Need to be more centered for the lasers, my bad. I should slow them down significantly though. Ooh, nice little Baran's launcher usage there. Like to see that. Bit of the satellite lizards here. And a nice little level up for the four. More deadly fireballs, always welcome. Okay. Little baby fireball. And paralysis. Absolutely with paralysis, that's fine. Get run over, unfortunate. There we go. Lockdown reestablished, GG. I'm gonna 
battle, not bad. Forty percent accuracy is always nice for newer players. Or attack speed, I mean. Yep, it's good enough. I feel like when people hear about V101, they rush for V101, and it's just kind of... It, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be one of those things you, you rush over like a good weapon. But yeah, that's a big increase for attack speed. That's a really, really solid pickup if you didn't have that already. Put this away... Yeah, because I think the next lower tier is only 20%, and even then, most people don't have a lot of god battles. This away... I'm kind of curious how many badges I'm at currently. So at least we could say we're profiting from the event pretty heavily now. 80 power materials this week. As a reminder, this week, not the whole event, just this week. So we can almost arm up a whole character from scratch. We're back up to 57 photon drops after giving away, I think, 20. Uh, 77 silver already. Yeah, we're going to swap over to Endless. So I'm going to bring in a raw cast. And he's going to bring traps and damage and everything boss kill. So you can bring in whatever you want for episode one. Figured it'd be a good rotation for players that haven't seen it. Oops, I missed the chat dialogue there. I read it. Hey, wait until TTF. No worries. Although, if you do that, you're not guaranteed to enter the TTF because a lot of people jump into it. I will warn you there. Let's do three. Do a couple of these. Um, no, I don't, I don't usually frozen shoot or anything. I should be able to deal with the slimes, which would be the only thing you would arguably frozen shooter there. We're bringing in damage. We mostly just need damage about it. Yeah, this quest is really good for just solid rares across the board. I'm going to go ahead and host it. We're going to give the team a moment to join. Show off the 80 hit caliber? Oh no. If you're come joining us, minus X. Um, I think Mad Cats is not joining us for this. So we'll continue onwards. It's just endless. I'm not really worried about being able to power through on episode one. But then after that, we'll see who wants to do some TTFs. And as I said before, if you're in the, on this one, I'm not really booting people out for TTF. The only exception might be for Chris, because he's a longtime friend of the stream and also was dying for red ring because he's he has like five characters with no red ring so i'll make an exception there we'll give another 30 seconds or so to sort my inventory so don't think i need this many items but we'll leave it as is for now so generally speaking for this kind of quest i want to make sure i always have a cannon rouge Right, because it's useful against dragon and initial shots on worm. I want to make sure I have something that can do damage to the boss. If I have an Excalibur, I should probably go take it and put away my Daylight Scar. I think I put my 30 hit Excalibur in the share bank. We talked about that last time. 
And then, uh, yeah, I'm just looking to bully, get some experience, maybe get V101, lame to Argent. Other crazy drops on yellow. I think people sleep on yellow ID. Say joining random level lobby is a good way to learn more of the game tech. Uh, probably not. I don't think people, like, it's, you're probably going to get more from watching uh, tutorials or potentially people that do VODs, that host. Because you're not guaranteed to get high level players, so if you get a mix of people to like 100 to 200, they might not know the tech. And if it's a, if it's like a pre-made four-man squad, they're probably more likely to know the tech. So even if they don't say it, they'll just do it by default. We got Excalibur for Warm Boss. I think we're good. Okay. So I'm assuming Mask Cats is not joining us, so we'll get started then in a moment. This should be all the damage I need. I need five more accuracy. started. <laughs> Elber Spirit says so also do big damage. Nice. Do VR. Oh, somebody walked away from the counter. Rip. We had it for a moment. I got trolled. VR Endless One. The reason why I think Rockcast is super, super good at this quest, one, he deletes every single boss by himself. Two, he deals with slimes. Three, there's ways to reset your traps. Four, Charge Arm destroys this quest. This is really, really fast XP. You can see he's just gonna dunk literally everything that moves. There's nothing it can really do against a raw cast. We're gonna walk in, we're gonna walk out, we're gonna laugh and blow them all up. Put down a fire trap to kill the slime that had the foolish choice of spawning near me. And now we know the other slime is here. I could slime dude, but I think I'm just gonna kill you. Goodbye, You're slime. So I just walked to its spawn point to kill it. Fire trap will automatically kill it. You can see I'm almost combo killing with just Charge Arm. So arguably if I get a nice Baran's launcher that's sphered, it probably would delete the whole room. Avoid healing, no worries. You get special special when they're frozen, nice. Yeah, we're just gonna shut down this room super hard. So for an episode 1 quest, we're getting pretty good experience. But for people looking for an alternative to leveling... Uh, I don't have control over the Lily, just be careful. Oh, I managed to tag it, nice. Ooh, so much damage. I forget where the slime spawned. Is it the middle? It was, okay. So as long as we cover where the Lily spawns in these waves be fine. Honestly, that's the only thing I'm scared of in the whole run. Everything else, I'm like, oh no, it's ruins, whatever. I don't really care. 
So I'll try to point out where the healing circles are. The rooms we do are random. The spawns in them are not. So you'll kind of recognize some of the rooms once you play the quest for a little bit. Really didn't freeze that guy, that's so unfortunate. An okay way to level for now since people are going through a lot of stuff that's hunting. I think what also helps with like t like why I like this over TTF for experience is that a lot of players just can't survive falls. Or they just don't have good items for Vol Op. And like Vol Op will sometimes pop up here, but like it's not guaranteed. And I feel like if anybody is a cast at all, this clear is so fast for episode one. Get out of here, Dark Gunner. I'm getting a little worried that we're not getting a healing circle room. That's fine. I'm gonna let them group up a little bit and then punish them. You can see I'm just kind of just straight up deleting rooms. Like, there's really not much they could do. And this is with only a shift of 20, let alone like when we have a force for this run. It's actually bonkers. Avoid healing? Okay. I mean, I'm not going to heal. I mean, I like free challenges. So the game will give you little mini objectives to keep the game fresh. And, uh, spoilers, when it's like, don't die on forest, it's hilarious. Because those are randomized. Hopefully we'll also see invincibility. So there's a potential outside of the boss rooms, which are on floors 10 and 20 respectively, that we'll just start a, a room invincible. So it helps even more when you have a party of like mixed experience. What I also like about this quest is you could do a lot of quick box checks. And there are a surprising number of good box drops on certain characters. Like in particular if you do the endless version for things like yellow or pink, they have fantastic box drops that make the run by themselves sometimes. Uh, so I think this is a room I can refresh my traps in. I'm gonna go a little more aggressive with the uh, my trapping. Do I have dress plate on? I don't. Okay. That's all I needed to know. I needed to know how much I needed to respect Lily. The answer is I apparently have to care. How unfortunate. Take care of the Lily real quick. And you can see we're just mm, bulldozing them. Rip. Let's go get that healing circle for the reset. So generally speaking, there is one healing circle per area. Like that's one of the caves ones. Forest has one, Ruins has one, Mines has one. As long as we can identify those, we know we could be very aggressive with traps. Speaking of aggressive with traps, this is the one for Ruins, for the reset. Oh, I know I could just throw them out like candy. Chat's scaring me with the mech gun into the, uh... Into the Darkbringer, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, I hope you kill. I mean, I have HP to survive that. Put down another freeze trap. The sorcerer will try to probably hit me, but I got bad news for him. Goodbye. So again, because I know this room is going to be so freeze trap oriented, I could just drop them for the team. And that's where I feel like I have that... Oh, I should move my mouse out of the way. I... That's why I feel like the Rock has is like such control over this run. Just he has all the right weapons, enough damage, good accuracy. Nice. Let's see if we end up getting stuff like spread needle in these runs or anything crazy from the ult rares. Nope. That's okay. We're gonna go ahead and refresh our traps. When you're leveling up normally, you would actually just touch this less. But since I'm a high level, I'm not going to level very much, which is a shame. I like doing this from like level 150 upwards. Ooh, we're invincible. Cool. 
I love being invincible. That's just something that can happen in the quest. We'll see how far we go with this quest. I'm assuming we'll go for at least one more loop. Then we'll move on to some TTFs, I think. I just want to say I did some endless. Sadly, we didn't party with Hulk Liu today so far. Maybe we'll get a chance later. I will gladly put down a freeze trap and walk away. That was not my soul atomizer button. if I want. What's my healing like? Oh, it's a pool. So we know we have one more. Oh, don't use Masetta. Yeah, I'm failing this challenge. I'm not I'm not even gonna try. Listen. I don't have Berserk Needle. So I'm just gonna go in and murder. I'm like, listen, I don't feel like saving 10 seconds. I <laughs> just no thank you. It slightly reduces our Masetta at the end. It's fun. The money went to a good cause. I'll lock these things down for the team. Yeah, we don't need like a ton of players with Frozen Needle. Or Frozen Shooter, I mean. healing. No problem. Way ahead of you, Forest. Goodbye, all these enemies. Fun drops from them. Red Saber. Fortunately, didn't roll with machines, so I'm not interested in it. That could have been good. Oh, yeah, so we know it's a boss coming up, so what I like to do as player one is I always go spread needle. It's probably a safe bet for everybody else to cannon rouge, since there's a strong possibility. Oh, I need to get rebuffed. There's a strong possibility that we are going to have to deal with Bull Op early. Let's see if we do. And if not, I switch back to Cannon Rouge. Let's say, did somebody not activate? Let's say, talk to the pink thing. There we go. And now that I know that Bolt Op is out of the way, I can just Cannon Rouge, because if it's Dragon Boss or Cave Worm, then I don't care. Thank you, Spread Needle. I feel like this also shows off how to deal with some of the bosses. Though, so, honestly, just watching people do these kinds of runs helps. Are you gonna missile me? You are. You're a jerk. I just choose to phase tank that. I'm gonna be honest with you. When you're at high level play, you're just like, you don't dodge. 
Otherwise, you just run in, like, really tight circles like this to dodge. High level play, you just face tank and move on. You do as much DPS as you can. <laughs> if, if it's a four-man group, sometimes the missile doesn't even hit you. So it's just better to go for it. That is not what I wanted to shoot. That sucked. Also, where's the team? There we go. Time drop from Paul. Okay. I'll take that, I guess. Actually, when there's this many enemies, I should be confused trapping. Small mistake on my part. I still have a lot of freeze traps for the remaining areas. I'm just hoping they're not all ruins. I say and immediately give ruins. Unfortunate. Ruins will probably force traps out of me. I don't want to have sorcerers on the loose. Those are like must kill threats for the team. And Del Sabers are kind of hard for the team to hit most of the time. We got the dark on our room of all things. Let me just shut this room down. Let me deal with this if the team doesn't have to. The so paralysis will also get them in case you don't have a frozen shooter. If you're looking for more ways to deal with them, do stuff like that. I have mag blast by the way. Does any is anybody close? Because I think a built up mag blast would be huge. I think for our clear speed. Oh, you're at 100? Oh, we should probably do it for sure. Once we're done with this room. Uh, let's use it because there's not much left in the run. I'm going to say using twins. So at high level play, I actually recommend for this quest having PB create to get a uh, photon blast earlier. But you're going to see a big difference in our damage. So we had shifted 20 before. We're going to be getting like upwards of 50. It's going to be really big for us. It should last the entirety of the run. Ooh, that's kind of low. Uh, interesting. Avoid using Masetta. Sorry, team. That's not happening. Also, hello? Did it, did it just lock me out of traps there? That was so rude. Did you see that? That was definitely a glitch. I confirmed the dialogue, but it didn't let me use traps until I confirmed again. That was weird. I wonder why it did that. Oh well. So now I'm able to combo kill before Jelen slash Silver. We're just cleaning up the waves real quick. The more people there are, the bigger that mag blast is. And the nice thing is, uh, because the run is generally going to take 10 minutes to get a full loop in, you're always going to build up enough PB with PB Crate as a force to donate, and you're potentially even going to fill it up to 100, depending on uh, how many of them you stack. Right, I should probably pop the boxes. This is something interesting. didn't pop the other boxes. Yeah. Yeah, make sure to look for the boxes. Sometimes they give photon drops and other things. Avoid death. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna avoid it by hiding in the corner. Goodbye everything near me. Okay, I was hoping to see more mines with yellow, because yellow ID mines is really good. I'm glad we finally got a mines room. A bit late in the run, but I'll take it.
Really, that guild chick got surrounded by enemies and he targeted me still. I'm out of here. Yeah, these kinds of rooms, I there's nothing that's really threatening, so I might as well just confuse Trout on the off chance that they just waste their time and target somebody else. Oh, I got hit by the mines glitch. So some rooms and mines uh, count as the door. Even though this door is not openable, I was here and it thought I was in the door, so it stopped my shots from damaging. It's very annoying when that happens. Other ruins room. Okay. Whatever. Ruins is okay for yellow ID, like Bull Claw is Psycho Wand, for example. But it's like I definitely prefer mines over ruins. Or Render Forest is not bad as well. Six hundred damage in two shots. Cool. Goodbye, everything in front of me. So yeah, I would say the gear requirement for this quest is a lot less than a TTF. Well, it could be sometimes easier to level with this quest. It's not necessarily faster than just looping dragon. Looping Dragon can get very boring. Other quests where I don't have a freeze trap. There's only two more rooms left. I think I can save my freeze traps to the next room. We still didn't find the forest quest to reset them. And we didn't do the mines quest yet to reset them. So there's still chances to get a reset. These guys. Let's just charge Vulcan for a little bit. I think the other ones are not spawned in yet. Want him in. I almost killed him with all normals. That's so sad. Gonna pop the boxes. Okay, caves. We'll take that. You can buy my money. You went to a good cause. We still have two minutes left to super buff. I think it's 45. Fun I'm thinking about it. Did chat ca what, catch why it was 45? Did, did we get a. Because two people should have been 40, three should have been 60. Is somebody's IQ dumb or something? I'm confused. Or did we double up on a mag blast when I was looking away? Because there's there's no way it should only be 45. That's just what I'm saying. It should not be possible. Unless something is seriously wrong. What are these? Because we even got the triple donate. Actually, you know what? Tank Minus got caught off guard. Yeah, because I'm thinking about it. I mean, well... Let me think. If it was two people doing the buff, it would be 40. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that, that's probably why. I think we're good. Never mind. I think that works with how many how we donated. Disregard. Let's kill these. So, I could reset my freeze traps. I don't think I should. There's only one room left. I missed a bronze badge. Well, there it is. There we go. Void death. Not a good room for freeze traps, but whatever. Oh well, we did what we could here. 
So we'll probably complete one more loop. And then we'll go into uh, TTF afterwards. Yeah, I think I'm thinking if two people donate versus one person donates. Because it does bump it up quite a bit. Yeah, we'll just ignore that. Which is fine. We, we don't really need it. I mean, at worst it's going to be, what, Worm Boss? If it's Dragon Boss, we legit don't even need it. The only one where it kind of matters is Vault Up. And that's about it. I'm just going to equip Cannon Rouge. Be good. Oh, pff, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alright, chat, whatever on this one. Goodbye, dragon. There we go. Nice and simple. Poor dragon boss. Arguably, we don't even need buffs. Like, the Dragon Boss is just so hosed. Stand up, Dragon. Almost got the glitch. Close. some quick box checks and then uh we'll reset it the 12 minutes should be more than enough for another cycle i want that power material okay, somebody stopped the clock nice I'm just gonna ha hang out near the shops because that's how you continue forward. Reduce invincibility chance, whatever. We don't need it. I didn't really use any healing. This should be good to go. Let's see, we ended it at 326,000 with about 222 XP a second. So, I mean, if you have a really solid group of TTF, that's gonna outdo it. But if you don't have anybody that survives falls, this is good XP. Like, where else are you going to be able to do these kinds of hunts and get easy access to healing circles? Sadly, we can't carry over the buffs to the next loop, so we gotta do what we have to do from scratch again. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's always good if somebody's really close to it to just pop the uh, buffs. It can be kind of tricky filling it if you're only using charge attacks like I am, so I have to remember to actually hit with power attacks every now and then. So I actually build meter. Definitely pick up some money to offset that massive Meseta usage. Avoid taking damage. Uh, probably not gonna happen. since I'm over here. Nothing of interest, sadly. This is a wave I can probably safely confuse Trump. Takes pressure off the team since we're a bunch of rangers for the most part anyway. 
Built some meter on them with power attacks. Crimson Assassin. That Crimson Assassin potentially is Heaven Punisher as an FYI. But you never know, we could just luck into Ubers across our many uh, random rooms. When using Masetta. Yeah, about that. I don't think that's gonna happen either. There we go. Yeah, let's build some meter now that they're low on HP. one confused trap down. Yeah, I'm trying to do this to conserve a little meter. Plus it gives the team a, a chance to actually hit things before I charge arm them to death. So by extension, I'm helping them gain meter by just choosing not to attack. We're up to 39 meter, not too bad. Using Masetta, don't think that's gonna happen. That Bull Claw is a Psycho 1 chance. Come on, Bull Claw. Open up to us and deposit to us a Psycho 1. 36, not bad. When they're frozen like that, I can avoid using charge shot. Plus, it goes a little easier on the character's wallet. Uh, I'm gonna freeze trap them. Team. And honestly, getting stray lasered like that, you're like, thank you for building me Photon Blast. Like, why thank you? How kind of you to build this meter? Weed healing, okay. This is another room I just confused trap. I'm already a whopping 59, because I'm not using charge shots. In a way, if you lose some time by not using charge shots, you gain it back by having super buffs in a four-man group. So I kind of like that dynamic. And then again, if you're really high level, then you can just wear PP creates or increases, ideally. Because generally your slots don't matter, and you don't need to be five units. You might as well just get free meter. Already at 67 meter, actually insane. Uh, I probably want them to both walk towards me, so I'm gonna stand here. Right, as long as the Senos die, I don't care what happens in the rest of the room. Yeah, at a whopping 70. Almost thought that was like a V unit that dropped because the Seno died. I got excited for a second. I was like, ooh, really? Nope. 77, nice. That's like, I gotta get some meter. Speaking of some meter, I'm gonna get free traps. Means I can afford to power attack more here. Perfect. 
I'm gonna be spamming all my freeze traps to help the team. Somebody just got 100. And honestly, sometimes just getting slapped. Like, maybe I should just get slapped. Hold on, let me get hit on purpose. Come on, hit me in the face. Do it. Yeah, there we go. Give me meter. <laughs> Build me that glorious meter. So if we fight Ball Op, I think I'm guaranteed to get it. If we don't fight Ball Op and we fight Dragon, I'm guaranteed to get it after Dragon. Both of those bosses are really good at building meter. Worm boss, not so much. Oh, he dodged the freeze. How unfortunate. Okay, so I'm at 92 meter and rising. I'm pretty close already. We might be able to get the Super Blast, honestly, at this rate before the first boss. I just need to get hit a little. Or just do more power attacks. But either way, I'm pretty close. Yeah, there we go. Build me meter. Yeah, 97. There we go. Now I'm at 100. More or less. <laughs> One shot, I'll hit 100. It is kind of funny. We're just purposely taking damage, but it is true. Sometimes it's just the best way to build meter. Okay, so we have somebody at 100. I'm at 99. I'm assuming this room, we should get really close. 93 is pretty close. And I just triggered it. So if you need to, just get hit in the face. <laughs> like, honestly. I think we could get it before the boss. I'm going to put down a fire trap here. A little confused trap down here. Rip. Lily said no. Okay. Everybody has it now, I think. Just don't accidentally use it. Put down another confused trap to make life easier for the group. Dude, where's the Lily? What's in the corner? Like, I know it's in this room somewhere. There we go. Alright, so we're we're coming up to a boss. We should definitely just activate. So I'm gonna do twins. Alright, so I think everybody knows what to do. There we go. Now this should be level 60. That's going to add several minutes to the buffs, and if we fight Bolt up with this, it's going to be disgustingly fast. How quick we kill this boss. 61, nice. 10 minutes of super buff. As long as we don't get killed by Mill Lily, we're pretty much good to go. And at this point, I can even just power attack, because it's like I'm charge attacking anyway. So I could just build my meter up again. Like, look at this, I'm at 7 already. This is disgusting. Like now I'm at 10. I'm at 11. I'm at 12. So dumb. So I can build it up if I need to. It's just forest. Uh, let's see what the, this thing has. I'm going to switch to spread needle just in case. I'm not going to wait for the rapies. We should just move on. We are technically on a clock. Uh, worm boss. Well, this is a good boss to have a super buff on. I'm potentially about to just dump this boss into, like, the river. The fact I only needed Cannon Rouge there is so sad. No Excal needed. Masetta? Sure. You know what? When I'm this strong, I technically don't need it. Already back to 35 meter. Disgusting. Poor 
enemies. Explore the middle a little. A little happy dance. Get out of the way. We're getting actually deleted. Music reminds me of Warrior's Whistle from Wild Arms Remake. Where, where is it from? Welcome, Boohoo1. You're doing well. This is the Speaking in 5 soundtrack. I could not tell you the song since we're listening to an 8 hour mix of the entire soundtrack. I got I got killed by Lily? That's so sad. Oh no, Lily was uncontrolled. I thought I hit the Lily there. That's so sad. Rip super buff. Rest in peace. Oh well. Well I'm at 67 meter. Just need to build meter again. I do miss the super buffs though. Yeah, I think I, I thought they got hit and I was like, oh no, they didn't get hit. Oh, I was like, it's too late. Level up your raw moral earlier. Nice, nice. Sucking very hell instead of very hard. That's not too bad to level up a character right now. It's 200% experience. Unless you're, like, totally fresh with the character, then it makes a bit more sense. If you have any Hell unit, or if you have any V5 units, you could just do CCC or something. Or if you have Heaven Striker plus uh, Striker unit, you could just do Episode 4. Oh, it's a fresh character. That makes more sense. Yeah, Raw Moral is pretty easy to level outside of literally being brand new. Boop, boop. What does fresh-ish mean? Get rid of these. These enemies. I'm at 94 meter. I, I could realistically have it by next room. Heavenly battle, heavenly ability, not bad. In fact, if these things laser me, I'm gonna hit meter. They didn't laser me. Okay. Guess they just took too long to charge. Okay, I'm at 100. Just some classical music as we kill everything in ruins. Don't mind us. Goodbye, Dark Gunner. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> so, true story. Uh, Rock has broken. Rangers build so much meter if they just don't use uh, charge shot. So it's like, my ability to refresh this is insane. I should probably freeze trap for the group. Is, is it 1350 ATP? Even though it scales slower as I level, it, it's just, his damage is just so high it doesn't matter, honestly. Yeah, you're more than welcome to hop in some runs once you level up a bit more. If your character is really close to 80, I don't mind helping you a little bit, but I don't really want to dedicate during the event itself, like, a, a full run. We're thinking of doing that maybe later on as more of a, a video premise. But the whole point of the event is to enjoy the, the super crazy stuff, or at least the bonuses of the event. Let's put some Confused Drops down. So technically, if I'm the only one with meter, we could buff up. But there's a pretty strong chance. It's a 50-50, it's Dragon. 
So it's more of a question of where we're at at the end of this room, if it's worth doing. Yeah, we don't mind people of any gear level hopping in. We don't mind teaching some runs, but yeah. Oh, you're just like a level? Oh. We we could probably get you there in like 10 minutes if you really wanted it, to be honest with you, boo -hoo. Two Two levels does not matter to me at all. That, that's fine. If you really needed help with it, we could do it real quick. But after this run. enemies. Boom, 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 get rid of these. Yeah, if people, if people are like 77, 78, that's whatever. We have quests we can do that you would hit that experience total in just one quest. Because we would just carry you in one of the harder areas. do a quick check to see what their meter's at. 97, so close. Uh, I should have it this area, at least. I'm gonna give him a chance to hit things by not immediately charge shotting. Nice. I heard somebody get it. So we could probably get a level 40 buff after this room to clear out the quest with it. If it is Vault Up, it'd save a lot of time. If it's Dragon, it's super overkill. Yeah, usually for newer players, we tend to do some cookie runs, but unfortunately this is like the only event where it doesn't make sense to do it. Since the experience bonus is now pretty high normally, or way higher than normal I meant to say. Cookie Quest is usually a great way to just power level uh, newer characters. We'll be doing a fresh 1 to 80 as like a, probably like a two hour video. I don't imagine it's gonna take more than two real life hours with uh, some super gear. Maybe like 15 minutes or 20 if you include setup. Yeah, with this high base experience, crazy times. If this is Dragon Boss, I feel so bad for Dragon Boss. Would love to see it. Yeah, we'll do it next week, I think. So I know Hellcleave is committed in. So Hellcleave will be one of the people leveling 1 to 80. I'll be borrowing his Hell Needle for the run. He'll still have a Hell Needle. And then we're going to see if there's anybody else with Hell Needles that wants to run a new Ranger. And we're literally just going to Hell Needle the entirety of the difficulty. I got a heal here. Kind of been. So yeah, we've done a couple videos before. I think our record was in the PSO thing. It said an hour 47, I want to say. We took a character from 1 to 80. So it really just depends on what kind of gear you have and how fast you could do it. But the, I, I do feel bad for newer players. But they're like, they're doing the big grind and I'm like, listen, I don't do that grind anymore. We, we have long since gotten past that point. Hellcleave says next time we fine, I'm gonna let you both use Needle Shot. It's gonna go blue who cast using Hell J Cutter. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. That would be super good. I just have to think about what ranger should be made. Chat will always... So the rule is, chat always makes my character when we do this. So we're going to... Probably spend almost as much time at the character select screen as we are doing everything else. So in the meantime, people that were joining the run can have some time to make their own character. Yeah, it'll, I was gonna say, somebody. as long as somebody's blue, Hellcleave has this covered. Hellcleave has thought about everything there. The blue ID is definitely preferred because of the Jaya chances that are in very hard. Roll a few phone roll. I already have. We we have one of every character. In fact, chat made one of them. 
Though at this point, I don't think I have a character that's not 180 other than Humar. Otherwise, we have multiple Phonumens and whatever. But I think for that one, we'll do uh, Ranger stuff. Goodbye, Arlen. Max with high dex. Oh, that's a good point. You know what? Good thing I'm leveling up that Hugh Neural mag. <laughs> right, Hellcleave? Welcome, Tiggy. Oh, oh, Dragon. No, Dragon, I'm so sorry. Chan, I would like to have a moment of silence for what we're about to do to this poor Dragon. I'm so sorry. We have 49 Shifta. I'm so sorry. Also, that was a higher level Shifta than before, so now I'm really confused. <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe we missed a donate or something. Yeah, pour one out. This this dragon is done. Oh, it said 45 on mine. That's why I got confused earlier. I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm just thinking wrong with donate. But no, it's 49 this time. Maybe I got robbed. Oh, we almost got the glitch. Oh, we did get the glitch. Look at his HP. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor dragon. <laughs> Did somebody get mag blast on the dragon? That's what's up. <laughs> Oh man, poor dragon. Legit just murdered. Well, we got three minutes to look up rewards. I might as well just pop some boxes, see if anything fun is in here. Nah, nothing interesting there. Well, welcome, Tiki. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we're gonna hand in the quest. We got 633,000 experience in one quest. Actual insanity. Huh. Doing okay, Tiggy? That's good to hear. Oh, you're a bit tired, though. Got a tiny bit of our money back. I guess I will make... I guess I'll play Hugh Cast, because as we've seen before, he's definitely my strongest clear now. Parameter. Is there a okay? So Mass Cats asks, "Is there a weapon for Ramar you'd recommend to learn to use? I've many to learn, but still learning when how to use them." Okay, so I'm gonna tell you probably in no particular order what to end up doing. Heaven Striker Berserk shots on things like zoos and some single target stuff, as well as potentially things like falls, long distance attacks. Charge Vulcan is always a great option to just single-handedly delete any other target, like mini-bosses. Charge Arm is probably your friend for most room clear. Uh, Cannon Rouge for bosses only, for the most part. It's really good at hitting flying characters. Frozen Shooter is more utility. Spread Needle is more utility. You'll, you'll spread Needle a lot of things in Episode 4, but you won't really bother using Frozen Shooter on most other targets. People will need things locked down like Ill Gills and Tower, for example, or annoying Del Depths and Seabed. But if you're just doing, like, caves or forests, you just, just blitz them. Doesn't matter. Otherwise, like, 80% of the time, you're probably using Charge Arm, and if something is too tanky to kill a Charge Arm, you Vulcan or Heaven Striker it. You just choose... Yeah. Heaven Striker has the nice benefit of being a sniper range weapon. You'll end up using it to kill spinners in the falls room since it has high base damage and also can hit full screen and shoots at pistol speed. 
So that will help if you're doing a lot of TTF runs to just get to learn to get used to that weapon, since you'll use it potentially for spinners, into berserk shots against the head on the falls, or if your Heaven Striker is kind of on the bad end, which is less of an issue for Ramar because their accuracy is so high. Uh, you might end up using Charge Vulcan instead. The, d the downside to Charge Vulcan is it has short range, so that if you're fighting something like Falls, it's often going to be pretty far. So you'll see, see you'll see other people potentially uh, run different weapons. Like sometimes you'll see like a what's called LNK Combat 38, which is a minigun, which I'll be using in this run as a Hue cast. Technically, Ramar could also use it. Welcome in Parameter. Yeah, like, most of, most of your items are really cheap in trading, because people just pick them up. So in Parameter, if you have a green, red, navy, white ID character you want to level and or bring it to DTF, by all means, host the game. Otherwise, I could host it as Sky, technically. Pretty is totally fine. Okay, so let's hop into the game. Draco Booger says, level 24 force just got back into playing. Cool. Welcome back. Hopefully some good luck with the levels. I wasn't sure minus X if you wanted to hop into this one. Otherwise, we'll have a free slot for somebody that wants to come in. Welcome back, Mass Cats. Oh, there we go. Minus X is back. Go ahead and sort our inventory a little bit. So, I just plan on killing everything and doing a lot of optional kills on the way there. <laughs> so, if you want, I would recommend probably somebody stay behind just to kill the wave after the first wave in the first room if you're interested in skins for weapons, even for trading value. Otherwise, this room will do pretty much standard things. I'm just double checking, I'm not forgetting anything about Viridian after the item swaps. So sadly, they no longer get V101, so there's no point to farming uh, Sinnoh Blues in that room. Uh, bu 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 uh, they get Lavis Cannon from Sorcerer. It's really optional if we go for that, I guess. Yeah, fortunately with 200% XP, it should be pretty much good to go Draco Cougar in a few days, I would imagine. Yeah, we're going to use this LNK combat to just delete an enemy. So the higher your <coughs> ATP is, the better the weapon is. Um... So anyway, feel free to clean up some enemies in this room. I can literally solo clear the other room if you want. Honestly, I have so much damage, it doesn't matter. One went out for people still making TTFR. Oh man, that's so sad. So you can see Disco Brain Man is insanely good on Hucast. Goodbye. I don't care that we only have level 20 buffs. You are not surviving me. So while they get some free kills in the other room, I recommend they start wrapping up right now. We're pretty much good to go. So whatever kills they did is probably fine. Honestly, Hucast does so much damage, it's just kind of insane. And we just need people to uh, get here. We need minus X. Coming minus X? No, no, don't don't kill them. We're good. I, I only wanted two waves killed. Don't don't do the full clear. It's too slow. That only makes sense if you're like super leveled, or if I stayed behind, I could have full cleared. But we we gotta get moving. I think the only exception to the full clear, I think if somebody wants to focus, so I'll focus on the first room in caves, 
Chat can move to the second room. Somebody can stay behind and kill that room. As long as somebody moves to the third room, everybody else will eventually go there and I will slime dupe. And that will squeeze out as much experience as possible without losing pretty much any time. As long as we're just being diligent and moving forward, it should be good. Oh, you were taking a bathroom break. That's fair. Reading the other response. Minus X offering up a spot after this one. Let's see. Can we get the glitch? Oh, we got the glitch. Oh, so satisfying. Goodbye. All right, so I'm going to hold down and to the right, and I hope with the camera angle that I end up somewhere near the warp. So I'm basically looking to fast sex it. I hopefully do not pick up a PD. Yeah, no PDs. I'm gonna go through the wall here in order to summon the enemy that needs to be killed. Chat, please do not kill the slime unless you know how to slime dupe. I'm gonna slime dupe this slime and kill every lily in here. One, two, three. We have now set up for slime duping. We're gonna go ahead and pop some slime. Okay. That should dupe him. Oh, he's dead. A little freeze trap in there. Do a little disc of brave man. And dead. Okay, so that was a quick clear. As long as somebody's helping me in this room currently and not leaving me to die, I should be good. Okay. That's the only scary part. I've seen people walk away and I'm like, no, 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 I need some help. All right, so they can continue to clear this room by all means, take your time. And then meet up where uh, Prana is, the red player, in this room when you're done. You can kill the nano dragons, you have time, trust me. I think you buy them in time. That's fine. You have time, you're gonna be waiting like 15 seconds. One, two, three. And then once you're done, you could take his warp, and I'm going to take you the rest of the way. Alright, so we're going to walk slowly forward to lose a little less time here, since I got hung up on the lily. And let's go ahead and kill these. Nothing of interest there. I'm going to put a telepipe for the rest of the group to catch me. There we go. Uh, do I feel like healing? Not really. Mostly just need to get rebuffed. Yeah, some people will walk through because there technically could be a lot of badges when I do that slime dupe. So sometimes it's not always the fastest. But again, we're looking to make sure to kind of minimize those weights. But because it's the anniversary event, it's worth killing like a bazillion things. But it's not worth pool clearing. But for example, when we come up into the next area, uh, I'm going to set a confuse trap down. You could kill that first group of confused things if you want. But I would generally make sure if you cannot see somebody on a radar, you need to get going. That'll be my rule of thumb recommendation to you. So there's a wait point where when we kill the cannabins that we have to wait for Sinnoh Red to deploy. So depending on who is first, I will adapt accordingly. I will generally always be the first in here due to how I play, but I will not be the first into the other room. I'm going to do confuse traps here, which is going to lead them to hitting each other and making really easy kills for chat. They can pick up those skills that they want. I'm going to kill Sinnoh Red. That just makes it so easy. So they have a few more seconds before they should probably try to catch up. Let's say at 535, they should probably move. They should be moving big time now. So they're naturally at the distance where they can probably catch up to us. There we go. Alright, so there's going to be a small delay here, since I know uh, I need to wait for Imperameter to go into the next area. I'm going to clean up a couple kills, and now I'm just going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. Since I'm, I'd rather just kill something while I'm waiting. So I know even if this guy spawns without the freeze trap being set, I'm still fine no matter what, because I combo kill. So I, I've done this run so many times while squeezing kills out, it's like not even funny. He's in my way, so I'm going to have to kill him. Unfortunate. Goodbye. Welcome, Arcadia Neo. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to move on. There's no point to killing the Sinnohs. He just blocked my doorway. That's the only reason why I killed him. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze trap here. Assuming team can kill the other one. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this to make it easier for whoever's going for the switch. Everybody else can just kind of come towards the boss room. There we go. Clean the path, and now we just got to group up here. So I don't have my red handgun, but I'm assuming somebody has a spread needle. So I will hand off to somebody. I just need it to not be me, and I will twin blaze, depending on who is doing it. Uh, so we're, we're going to see. Generally, the highest level player will do it, but it depends on where they spawn. Uh, so I might... Oh, actually... Be good. So we got a spread needle on the left. But we have mech guns on the sides. I'll try to slow it down for the spread needle. I tried. Look at Murphy. Hope you're doing well. I'm gonna slow down the thing a little bit with Twin Blades. So just do normal attacks. And you should be good. I'm gonna slow it down a little more with Twin Blades. I'm gonna go to the next monitor to slow it down again. I have a lot of ATP, so if I happen to assist, it's fine. There we go. We got through it. <clears throat> Hopefully you're doing well, Murphy. Oh, you are so dead. Welcome to the Disco Bray, man. Goodbye. Alright, so I think I'm the player closest to it, but I'd like to pick up money if it's money. Damn, it's not money leave materials behind I don't care I'm gonna equip charge Vulcan here I'm gonna do a little pause trick here put a little freeze trap here walk the enemy over here line up the corner turn around slightly misalign unfortunate kill the dark bringer uh I'm gonna confuse trap this but I think I'm gonna go for the fast strat what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna freeze trap right at that little circle on the floor I'm gonna weave between them because that works every time and then if I'm fast enough I messed it up. If I had trap shoot correctly, that would have killed him. I should probably just bring my ray gun out so I don't have to worry about that. Makes me so sad when I'm with it. Oh well, that would have been fast. In single player, he faces you. In multiplayer, he faces kind of arbitrary players, which is kind of annoying. So when he doesn't face you, there's not much you could do. So sometimes he'll actually target you with grants if you do it perfectly. I think I bopped slightly when I went in between them, and that little bit of slowdown was enough for me to not get the uh, thing that I wanted, but that's fine. Oh well, we get a lot of practice. See how he's looking at the hunter there? That is annoying. I hate that. <laughs> like... Red handgun with 30 machine to give you? Nice, nice. Uh, so I think we're good. If you want, I could just put a telepipe. Yeah, I was gonna say, somebody can telepipe. So, typically for this first phase, you'll pick out a weapon that has high base ATP. So for newer players, this will be Red Handgun. Um, for Rangers, it'll be your Heaven Striker. You basically want to have something that can single shot something without leaving you in a long animation. If you happen to be lucky enough to have something like Master Raven or Last Swan, then those are also pretty decent for just a quick normal to kill these. So if you're finding yourself struggling a little bit, uh, there are weapon choices you could potentially get into. So these first three are always the same. There's always one that's hittable, thing that you can't hit, and then thing you can. In single player, you can line it up real quick. My recommendation, if you're trying to learn how to dodge the spinners, is that they only do really one of two patterns. One, they heat seek, and two, they change direction. So you just have to kind of observe the minimap. I don't recommend looking at them physically. Just look at the minimap and just see what, what are the dots doing. So I can see that there's a pretty big gap here, so I'm just going to walk over here. And then we should probably not get hit while clearing a little bit. So I'm getting chased by a few heat seekers, which is fine. I almost was a heat seeker. We're just gonna clean it up the best we can. 
I will reach out in a moment. I need to pay attention to the mini map. Last Wander Master Raven or Ruby Bull. Oh, Ruby Bull, it's also good, potentially. Oh, good luck at work, Murphy. Yeah, roll ATP matters because you just want a single target. Now, I'm a Hue cast, so I'm going to just charge Vulcan this thing out of existence. Goodbye, boss. So. <laughs> so he, he's going to do all the damage. Don't worry, Chad. He's only level 20 shift dead. Doesn't matter. So ideally here, I'll have LNK combat to hit the boss as it tries to run away. If I can't get it, it's fine, but it's just nice free damage. I'm going to hope that the boss goes up and then down and doesn't go straight down. It went straight down. I'm going to go to the side because it likes to target players. It does a two-thing ricochet. I'm going to hit it here and hope it stays here. It did. Now you get to die. Oh, that spinner actually messed me up slightly. Maybe it lives. Oh, it lived because of the spinner. That sucks. Oh, we got lucky. Bye. I like to do normal, normal, special on this. There's a spot you can stand with the Vulcan to get it guaranteed. It's a little tight for the timing for a normal heavy special. And since I just want consistent damage, I might just go for the safer route here. I should probably practice the normal heavy special, but it's also kind of annoying that you only get one real shot at it. Yeah, like that, I just barely hit it. Show it off, I guess. Okay, it's in my face, so it must die. I went in doubt, I just hover between my weapons and see what it's doing. So I know that that's going to be a little awkward to hit with Charge Vulcan, so I'm just going to do my normals here. Ideally, it targets me. If it doesn't, it's fine. Good luck, team. Uh, I'm going to come down, be invincible for a little bit. I might be able to kill it. Right, I'm going to try to revive it. I was going to say, I'm going to start trying to revive the other player, but fortunately they have escaped all. <laughs> I, I want to make sure everybody gets XP here. Rip, Rip escaped all. Okay. And that's the run. Nice level ups for the team. Oh, you got PD'd by falls. Oof. So please make sure to pop the boxes. It's actually worth checking boxes. Thank you. I would probably pop them with, like, if you have chain lightning, it's not bad. Or just a pistol. Ideal. You're a little too far away for Cannon Rouge. So we can clean up the run a little bit. <clears throat> There we go. We'll do a few more. Regular song can reach most of the boxes in the room on the middle edge of the ring. True. I just like pistol because I can go like pew pew pew. If you line it up, you can hit like three. Or you can hit usually two. Doesn't do bad. But if you're if you're alone, then yeah. But otherwise, most people are generally spread out if it's a fast kill. If it's a slow kill, people tend to be more grouped. The people could kind of sweep in opposite directions. It just depends. Like, on a high-level game, we'll still be in the Cardinals, so we'll just kind of do what we can. Don't know what I just watched, but it was awesome. It was a... It was a decent kill. We lost a little bit of time, but... It's fine. We're just gonna into a rhythm. Yeah, Hue cast kind of deletes everything, so I don't need people to necessarily have damage. Just like a teeny weeny little buff, and we're good. Did someone want to take Minus X's place? Minus X offering up the slot.
important parameter. I was gonna say, I'm assuming Helkly or Tiggy or somebody would probably hop in. We'll give another 15 seconds or so, then minus X if you wanna hop in, if nobody else does. I just want to make sure because I, I don't want to hung I don't want to hang up every time we do the run. Yeah, Draco Cougar needs to get out of uh, hard mode. I think. I can jump in, but need a minute. Or we'll wait for Hulk leave. Yeah, generally I don't like to stop every run and ask. I usually do a few and then we swap out. But we'll wait for Helpley for a couple clears. see where they are point-wise while we wait for Hulk leave. So they are at 8,763 for Spaceship, 743 for Seabed, 577 for Tower, 898 for Atrocity 1, and 640 for Atrocity 2. Is a force good for this run, asked Draco Cougar? Uh, usually. You probably want one. No worries, minus X. I usually, uh... Level 30 shift to D-Ban is Allure is pretty good. Minus X, the he, Draco Cougar is not high enough level. But typically speaking, uh, in order to deal with Volt Op, you would prefer a Ranger. But technically, when you get higher level and you get items like Excalibur or Galatine, depending on your force, uh, you might hold on to it and use V801 in order to stunlock the screens. So there are things the force does well in the run. But generally speaking, when it comes to damage, the rangers and hunters will way overshadow the force in this run. They're okay at it in, like, solo play. <laughs> oh no, the Meseta is dropping. There we go. Hellcleaf has arrived. Ah, Hellcleaf brought a force. Let us continue. Try to spell FML, damn. So yeah, being able to Zalore 30, the boss is big. Uh, potentially, if you have a lot of PDs, technically there's an alternative, but not people will do it because it's very expensive. There is a challenge mode weapon you can basically add any special to. One of those specials is Zalore. So technically, for example, you could have your Ramar with Shift to D band. I did not mean to press that button, that was silly. Go forward and essentially debuff the boss by himself and use his own buffs as an example. Or if you're playing in very gimmicky comps, let Cassie clear up their room if they want. I just want to make sure we clear like that one wave and then the second wave. They want the hard items. If you don't care about the skins, I don't care about the skins. Uh, freeze trap there. Yeah, Hughcast just deletes everything here. So, basically, the stronger your companions are, the more you probably want to force. Otherwise, like... I, I, guess, it, I guess it just kind of depends. You don't want two forces in the run, generally speaking. They'll be very weak. You could get away with just a Ramar most of the time if you have, like, really, really strong ATP. 
But if you were to have like a pure Hue cast army of death, then probably Force is stronger. Although I haven't run the numbers if it's better to like Raw Marl in that scenario or if it's better to Force. I would think it would be better to Force in that team comp. But that's not something I've had a lot of testing with. Yeah, force can all, force used to be a lot more useful when you would go through and do Gavoe stacks. Oh, Phonuman is fantastic. If that's a really good first pick. That character is stupid busted in episode four. We play Phonuman all the time. What a character. His benefits of having a uh, Gavoe buff as well as uh, the raw techniques is just unsurpassed. Undeniably one of the best forces, if not one of the better characters in the game. Somebody give that back. Fair Lily. Perish. I care not if you're rare Lily. I'll murder you just the same. Team's helping me with- oh no, Team's not helping me with this room. Okay. Challenge mode. There we go. Just gotta line up those shots. I get scared when nobody's in that room. I get really scared because I'm like, man, I can just die to random stuff. Most of the time I'm gonna be moving around at 7 HP. Ooh, there we go. I made it through the doorway that time. So that way I don't- that way I don't make the team wait as much. One, two, three. So when we do three shots, it'll always dupe a slime. You could dupe it with anything, it's just easier with free, or with fire traps. Because it hits them while they're on the floor. Need a little more movement here. There we go. So I got some movement towards the door. I'm gonna put a telepipe down for people that are taking it. Oh no, everybody ran to run. Been over 20 years since I played, came across the stream as like, can people still play? And just got started yesterday. Nice, nice. Yeah, Phonuman, uh, being it- Oh, somebody tried to share a link. It got deleted. Presumably it is a bot. There's usually the only kind of people that share links in the stream. Silly bots. Speaking of Zalor, Zalor speeds this up significantly. Watch the damage dealt to this boss. Don't blink. Get the top health bar and actually gone. <laughs> we did 10,000 in like a second and a half. Yeah, that's, uh... Listen, I'm gonna Jaya that boss's brains out, and there's nothing it could do. Damn. Die mate, I don't want die mates. So basically, if we want to get free kills, Hellcleaf could just arbitrarily Zalora wave, and they'll probably die without him needing to do anything else. So he just gets, like, the world's freest kills. Like, see how there's only two enemies left? I didn't even hit them. They just did that to themselves. So when you're doing, like, really quick badge checks... It's kind of nice to have a force. Because some enemies will, like, just barely not kill each other. Like, for example, the forest enemies. You have to, like, double confuse trap in order to do it. And it's kind of annoying. But if they get to Lord, they just die every time. I don't want to be first in the room, so I'm going to wait at least four seconds after somebody enters that room. Alright, and that should help people in the room. Alright, good enough. Let's go forward. My visual cue is when the Red Sinnoh spawns, you'll see its graphic. When you see its graphic, not the shadow, when you see the graphic, you put the freeze trap down. You don't bother doing anything else. The freeze trap detonates by itself. Goodbye. I'm going to lure them away from the door. I think because people are running to the door early, it's causing them. It's causing me to get blocked in. Kind of annoying. I would actually recommend everybody just stay in the middle briefly. Then this doesn't happen. I could freeze trap in theory, but if they're already at the door, not much I could do. Let's do this. Freeze trap here. One, two, dead. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna kill this to help the team out a little bit. One, two, dead. We're gonna go ahead and one, two, dead. You cast is very strong, if you couldn't tell. Just. Doesn't care what they want. They're, they're gone. Um... I guess I will Twin Blaze, but I'm not player one, so good luck. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with good luck on this one. I don't know if Hellcleave has the Vieta one. Pro probably not. Ooh, a shotgun? Mm -mm. You you need spread needle. Shotgun is the wrong call. It's too slow. It specifically needs to be spread needle for future reference. Um. Oh boy. This is gonna be an interesting run. Let's do this. I'm gonna slow down the monitor a little bit by doing this. So it's gonna check my ATP for damage for people that don't know how that works. I have like 1594, which is insane. I also have machine percentage. So I do extra damage to this boss every time this flame hits a monitor. I'm wondering why I'm doing this. So if we don't have a good Oh, it skipped a monitor. You cheater. Cheater. I think that happens due to desync. Right, I'm gonna hit this monitor. It should die soon. There we go. Yeah, that could be really rough if we don't have a good lock. So we need usually a spread needler or somebody with a Vieta 1 plus Excalibur slash Galatine to do it. The cast is one of the only characters that can't really do it in multiplayer unless there's like multiple people twin blazing. Are you missling me? Such a jerk. Glad I didn't berserk there, that would have killed me. Anyway, he's dead now. Phase 2 is very quick at least. Please give me bunny. Thank you, just wanted bunny. I don't want anything else for him to drop, because that, that cuts my cost down for the run. Given that the Masetta is boosted. Normally I don't care, but 7,000 is 7,000. He's dead. We're going to go for the strat here. I actually prefer if the team stays in there for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Oh, I got tagged a little bit there. Yeah, see how he's facing me now? That's what happens in single player. I'm glad that that happened. So chat waited for me to get further in the room. So that just made that so easy. <laughs> if chat was wondering what I was going for earlier, it is so free in single player to do that. You do that setup every time. Oh, I got here so fast. Yeah, I'll kill these enemies while I'm waiting. Why not? Yeah, don't care about your defense. Goodbye. A breeze trap here for safety. Put one over here to catch him. Deleted and leaving. Uh, I'll put down a telepipe for people that want to use it. I'll have to restock them though. And because I have level 30 Shifta, that also helps me hit the minimum ATP to kill things in one hit. So it is actually kind of important that I get the buffs. Like in terms of like dealing with the false spinners. Because level having a force level 30 shifted people means that it's just going to increase the likelihood we one shot. Forces also can potentially get Bowie spam here if nobody is strong enough, which might happen with fresh parties. Although generally speaking, I would not advise doing this quest unless you can at least one shot the spinners, because that's a good test to see if you have appropriate gear. change directions. I had a feeling they would. They didn't look like heat seekers. That one's a heat seeker. The one that, that went towards me like that? He's coming towards me real slow. I think that's called lazy chase, almost. Out of here. Alright, so I'm gonna stay on this side of the map since I know that I have to hit falls and I'm a short range character. I'm gonna go ahead and just equip Vulcans here. I know, generally speaking, if we full clear every single spinner, it's always two full clears and then two spinners. That's the only math I know about this fight. Don't ask me how many spinners you actually need. I just know from experience that's what you need. And if somebody misses one, then you kill three. It's, it's not really a big deal. Uh, so I might be able to get a couple stray hits here with LNK, but it's going to be annoying. 
Uh, I got a few hits. Please stand still. Damn. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the side to reduce the chance of getting hit. And I'm gonna pause trick to avoid getting stopped by the spinners. Stay still. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna back up slightly to reduce the odds of me being hit. Okay. Unlucky. Ooh, we're getting a bad pattern here. I'm just gonna hold still. That time the boss straight up targeted me. That felt a little rude. Will you stop it? You do something else? Okay, it's not targeting me because it did a different hand. It gave me mag blast. Really? Wow. I'm gonna take a lot of damage here potentially. Ooh, it didn't hit me with the return. Okay, good. Okay, that was ridic that was that was pretty unlucky. For it to do that many attacks without moving. Just, ugh. At least give us a chance to regroup. Oh well. So Zalur here should do a lot of damage. Alright, so we're gonna see the damage difference with Vulcan if it stays near me. Damn it didn't stay near me. We could see we could see its health bar is melting. Horses can also foe during this phase. Uh no. I was trying to menu. That trolled me so hard. Man, I could have actually done more. And that stopped me from swapping. Oh, you're so lucky that killed. You're <laughs> so lucky. I was trying to change into Vulcan, and it canceled my equipment menu. I could have even donated Dolphin, but because I was already in the menu, it uh, donated. Unfortunate. Nice skill though. This should level me. Ooh, I got the accuracy that I wanted. Need to remember to reset. Why? What? What's on your other button set that you needed? Your Bowie? Can you just assign that to the numbers? Yeah, but why though? Ooh, there we go. That mash was real. I think I have enough telepipes, right? Yes. So we'll keep going. Wait for and parameter. We'll do a couple more runs. We'll probably be stopping. Probably at most three more runs. So we've been uh, streaming a long time today. I think we did uh, only about two hours before, but overall we're going to be doing probably like eight hours of PSO. Waiting for the game to be made. Spin in circles. Do the hell cleave dance. Huh? Why won't it let me... It won't let me cancel that menu? Why won't it let me cancel that menu? That's weird. It's like, I hit that by accident, but usually you can back out of menus in PSO. Interesting. There we go. Gonna make sure L and K is equipped, and then we're good to go. So I got that one extra accuracy from the level up finally. Well, 
Bombzil quoting um, called, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is where the screen name came from for Twitch. Sadly, I couldn't do Ziggy Pig. Somebody took it already. Um, goodbye, enemies. Let chat clean that room up. It wants to. Let's we'll move on. Yeah, it was kind of sad. I wanted to have a consistent one, but I'm like, whatever. Good luck to whoever owns it, I suppose. I didn't. They didn't look like they actively streamed at the time. My enemies. Wow, that was 2,000 damage. Disgusting. Their crits are kind of out of this world. Yeah, today was a nice series of runs. Even came back and did more tower. It's one of the ones that's not run as much. I don't mind doing some Atrocity 2s, but it's got to be in moderation. I hope other people play some of those quests. Like, it's definitely easier for, like, people that are streaming the game to get the group together, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm being forced to play the quest because nobody else is doing it. it. Leads to a pretty bad feel. I just want to see where my head is. Okay, there's my head. I walked into the camera range on purpose. I think this is the right angle. I don't know if the my movement rotates during it. Oh, that was pretty close. Which I would agree. That was almost spot on where I needed to move. The reason for this is fashion efficient is XP, not drops. Uh, it's a mix of both. So there's an endgame item you can only get here, the red ring. So like people will run it due to that. Honestly, if it was just for XP only, I'd like other quests for it. But the fact that, like, you need this item if you're playing most characters means that somebody will have to run it at some point. If Red Ring was not here, I would not run this quest, I don't think. I think people overvalue how good this quest is. It's it's okay. There are better runs in PSO. It just happens to also give experience. Here, um... Like, if people know what they're doing, like... If you're going with, like, fresh people, for example, it makes sense that you're playing, like, very hard TTF. If you're being, like, actually... Oh, no, chat, let me alone in this room. Oh, I'm gonna heal. Come on. Chat, please. <laughs> please kill the nano dragons if you're gonna kill the lilies. So sad. I can't survive that room. Rip me. Yeah, I can get through the lily room. The nano dragons, I'm very likely to die in. It forces me to burn a lot of diamates, or that happens. I thought one was enough, it was not enough. So sad. But anyway. One, two, three. We're gonna go back to duping. Red Ring is a level 180 shield in Affinia. I think it's lower level normally. It's like 121 in Vanilla or something like that. Uh, but in Affinia, it's a 180 shield that adds 20 to basically every stat. So it's really, really strong because it lets you overcap ATP and uh, basically overcap ATA. Your attacks are extremely likely to hit. So for most people, it's the best in slot. For forces, it may or may not matter. It depends on the run. Like if you're playing a lot of episode four, I wouldn't even bother with it to be honest. If you're playing where, like, you're actually going to use your accuracy for demons, or you're, you eat it for these other things, then yeah, you would probably get it as a force. If legitimately all you're doing was spell slinging, then no, you don't need it. Which is possible. We've, we've done episode 4 characters that all they do is throw spells. We care not about accuracy. Three seals is pretty solid on force. 33 resistance to everything, 33 defense, and 33 evade. Means that you're probably going to resist most things in the game, including surviving falls earlier than other players might be able to. Pretty good choice. I will usually run whatever merge is needed for damage. 
So if I'm in a very fire heavy run, I'm gonna usually run a Gafoe Emerge. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Three Seals also gives a boost to Resond. And it's one of the items you can get early. It's a level 33 requirement. You can do 1k gambles if you look at the Corrin's gamble list. I don't remember the day offhand. You can also technically get it from the bo uh, bronze badge gambling, as was pointed out by chat last time. So there's a there's a few different ways to get it. It doesn't drop from any enemies though. You have to do one of those methods to get it. I took a little long there. Hopefully that's still fun. Yeah, that's still fun. Ooh, it was a little slow in the free strap. I want to lure them in the middle. There we go. Now we're good. Ah, somebody lured him back to the door. I got baited. No. <laughs> Gotta kill them. We're in my way. Okay, freeze trap. One, two, dead. Gone. There we go. Yeah, like, generally speaking, if you want to level quickly as a force, you should probably not be playing TTF unless you're in a group. You will generally, if you have any kind of leveled mind mag, find that you will level much faster playing things like... Offhand, Massive Attack 4B in Episode 4. Is 3 Seals ever in the retail game or just added item? I don't know that. I, I never played original Blue Burst. I only know sporadic facts about it, so I can't answer that. I'm assuming it was available somewhere. No items in this game are like brand brand new, with the exception of some modifications on like the Type M's and the weapon skins. So they were in there. Whether they're available or not, like, I'm not sure. Let's see where he goes. Yeah, I don't know. I I prefer to do something other than three seals, but for people that don't like to barrier swap, which I really highly recommend if you're going to be serious about force, uh, I don't really use three seals that much. It's not going to add that much damage over the other ones, and all you really want is clear speed at the end of the day. So if you have something that buffs Gafoe or Rafoe, it's probably best in slot for you, regardless of its stats. Also, saving bronze is bad. Uh, I think it's a mixture thereof. I would say. Oh, I got distracted. I saw a 50 hit weapon. I might, I might shame that one at the end of the run. I got excited and then I saw it was Ripper. I'm like, oh, did I get a 60 hit Vulcan? No, direct, useless item. So sad. I oh, I thought the chat was gonna kill that. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. So it's gonna look at health leave. So assuming it's gonna look upwards. Interesting. Oh, it does it really not like? Does it not like Hugh New Rules? Oh no, Ramar. Never mind. Ramar came with us. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I've never seen it focus me before over any other character. It has a priority system for those that are curious. I am not that high on the priority list. It hates Rangers. Get out of here, Indie Ballroom. Uh, I would say you should definitely keep them for your own personal use. Have a bazillion ad slots. Ad slots are not really hard to farm. It's just that they're not really worth your time farming. You might pick up a few incidental ones if you are leveling new characters and playing Episode 4. Since Episode 4 is like one of the best ways to level new characters. So honestly, like a group of really seasoned forces could probably hard carry you through either Massive Attack 4B... Or if they're really daring, they could take you to new Mop-Up Operation 3, which gives so much raw XP and there's no bosses. Downside is it requires potentially really high HP. So generally you'll only see people go for that if they have uh, items like Heavenly HP to give 100 HP. Or if they just decide to blow all their HP materials on a character. Those are like the only real times you will see that. So, like, I would potentially do with help leave. I, I would trust help leave. But would you do that with random public groups? No. 
but there's way more efficient means of leveling. Plus, there's also cookie quests, which are stupid broken, but you can only do those if you have uh, cookies. So if you're wondering how I got to level 80 in under two hours, uh, cookie quests, my answer to you, nothing tops that. It is, it is the pinnacle of power leveling. It has a guaranteed 300% XP multiplier in potentially episode 4, and it is insane. Get out of here, enemies. Oh, that spinner's gonna troll. Uh, any specific things in episode 4? Uh, I mean, if you just want to give it a, I See, the problem is, like, I don't know how leveled your mag is. If your mag is not leveled, I don't know how much fun you'll have with it. I love going there, because I always have 150 mind mag, and I just absolutely obliterate everything, and it's, like, the easiest kills ever. But I'm also a player that's been there pretty often. You could give it a shot if you want to see. I would try massive attack, and then select the B one in that option. And then play up until you see zoos. And if you don't know what zoos are, they're big birds. If you see big bird and you have trouble with big bird, that's fine. And you've learned something about episode four for now. Cookie quest is something you could do at the bottom of most quest counters. It requires you to have a Halloween cookie. I hate that it's called a Halloween cookie. I wish it was called anything else. It should have been Christmas cookies, let's be real. And then uh, you can use that as a token in order to enter the quest. For new players, I usually do a couple. Wow, I really missed that. That is so sad. Oh, if Murphy was here, I was going to say I lowered the threshold to hit. I don't know if the accuracy he was using was correct. We'll check it out. I'll, I'll switch over to Vices to double check. And to test that out. Let me pull my Vices out for the next run, actually. I want to see. So it should pop up. At, yeah, there we go. Now it's 81. So that one now looks correct. So I think what happened before is due to fractional math, I didn't have 81%. That's very interesting. But it's a shame that phase 2 is so hard to hit. Okay, I'm going to choose not to damage it because it was just in a bad position for me that whole time. So if, if we choose not to attack it here, it's going to do a swing again and we get another chance to kill it without its soul linking. Should I'm, I'm getting hard trolled. I went to weapon swap again. I was gonna say, my rule of thumb is do not put important buttons on your control panel. Please do not put important buttons on your control panel. I will take this damage. I will. Oh, that's fine. Zombie for doing damage. Now we're in a bad cycle. Well, rest in peace, whoever is soul linked, because I'm killing you. Just, I'm just letting you know. I'm like, rest in peace. I want this boss battle over. It needs to end at some point. I'm putting my foot down. Goodbye, boss battle. So, okay. So now, now we have it guaranteed. So, I don't think Murphy's math was correct. And I want to double check it. I think it is 81 for Vulcan, which is what we saw there. I don't think from a... I don't think from 10% accuracy, it only adds 10% accuracy. That doesn't sound correct. Like, I know the boss has evasion. Is, like, the evasion just, like, so perfect it works out that way? So normally what happens is if you do, like, light heavy special, it will scale the third hit very high. Granted, it is a special attack it's considering, so maybe it works out that way? If not, that's a pretty funny coincidence. So I'm very curious. I'm gonna do that same run, but I'm gonna substitute my Charge Vulcan, which is okay anyway, with a, uh, other attack. As if so, that's kind of funny that it, it happens to work out one-to-one. -one. Normally, it's a much bigger increase, but I guess the boss's evasion is good enough that that occurs. It's still kind of a fun fact either way. We're going to do that same run, only this time more optimal. So we have a vice here, which is just slightly stronger than a charged Vulcan. More importantly, it is five more overall accuracy compared to my LNK combat. So I'm going to definitely enjoy that.
There we go. Mash through the dialogue. We're good to go. Let's do two more. So, Hughcast only really cares about accuracy. He does not really care about the stats on the weapon. They're nice if they're there, don't get me wrong, but, like, he cares way more about having a Charge Vulcan with 80 hit than he does having, like, an Excalibur with 20. I'm gonna be real with you. He just wants to go and delete everything with his Vulcans, if possible. Oh, Mask Cat's offering up their spot for one of the two final runs. Somebody would like to take up the offer. Please let us know now. So I want to compare again. So this vice should lead to some consistency. The downside is I'm probably going to be forced to heal. So this is going to cause me to use a trimate per run, which does actually make the run more annoying in some regards. But that's fine. We have 10 still from earlier. Hmm. I don't see anybody, I guess, waiting. So, I know there's a little bit of a stream delay, but... I think, Mascat, if you want to hop back in, you're more than welcome. Okay. Let's fix our camera slightly. more. Good enough. Yeah, we'll do one last run. The fact I can almost heavy special special that monster is so sad. I put double confuse trap down. I hope that kills without Salora. It did. Nice. Here, um, goodbye enemies. 13 is a very good armor to get. It mo it most importantly boosts accuracy, but it also happens to buff the base damage of Disc of Brave Man. So its overall damage potential is kind of bonkers. If you're wondering how I'm doing so much damage, sometimes even the basic gear is just really, really good. Just maybe not for every character. Nicely done, nicely done. So he can just land all heavies on the dragon, which is funny. So if every hit is doing somewhere between 680 and 700 times 5, it means he's doing 3500 without crits. Dragon in any given shot. Very silly. But just two of me and the dragon is instantly dead. Or... I, I don't really want to charge Vulcan him, actually. Oh, he died super quick. I'm gonna go on camera. Okay, I see where I am. <laughs> just, I'm just I'm just peeking in the camera. I just need to see where I am so I can get a good idea of where the warp is. Renov drop? That's disappointing. Okay, so we kept our health high. Thank you for the heal. You sacrifice a little bit of speed by being the first person in here, since that makes me take longer on the slime duping, which is really sad. One, two, three. Here's slime. Perfect. We're gonna put three traps down. We should do. And this will kill. Back up a little bit. Wait. Use. A brain man. Ooh, a gold badge and a bronze badge. Ooh, look who got rewarded for extra kills. Look at that reward chat. There we go. It paid off finally. I basically got a PD equivalency out of it. Uh, okay, there we go. Chat helped me out. <laughs> I was like, I can kill that room. It's just awkward. Okay, there we go. Now I get to keep on running. Uh... I check and run to the door if they want. I want a slime dude. Oh, come on, give me something good. 
Aw, oh, disappointing. Oh well, I tried. At least somebody, it looks like some people are getting badges at least. Yeah, there we go, gold badge. Hey, paid off. <laughs> Three PDs. Yeah, the trick with this worm boss, by the way, chat if you don't know, just walk straight in front of you and you will automatically dodge the laser. There's a little gap at the edge of the raft there on the ultimate that you could go to. Very hard mode is a different pattern, which is a bit unfortunate, but for ultimate, it's super consistent. The most of this time, the boss will just not do anything at all. Because if you know where to stand, you dodge it, and then you normally just burst him so he doesn't get to do anything else. Oh, that's unfortunate. It wasn't money. Okay. Hopefully we'll help with this a little bit. I'm gonna put a little happy confused trap down. A tag, that's fine. Ooh, there's a lore. Yeah, they're ultra dead. GG. I think I almost killed them with just a normal heavy. That's kind of insane. An equip disc of Rayman. I'm gonna stall a little bit here. I can maybe kill some cannabins. These are just free kills. Maybe somebody will get something interesting out of it. Let's see. Okay. Onwards. And the red should be spawning right about now. Perfect. I'm gonna leave the free strap near me. Tell him to get good. He's dead. Uh confused trap, confused trap. Uh people are going in the doorway. That's unfortunate. That's fine. We're good now. Ooh, 107% chance of hitting that special? Disgusting. <laughs> what was that damage? Did you see that, child? It was like 3,700 damage he just took? Holy. Bye. What a character. Thank you for the heals. Yeah, we're bringing in the vice. I want to see if the boss's evasion somehow equalizes that to exactly 10 ATA. I imagine it... Maybe it does? I always thought the boss had um, less evasion on that form, but I guess the other form's evasion is so high that it makes it seem like it's not as high. Regen enough health that even if he wants to target me with missile, I should live. Uh, of course. What a troll. I, it, every time, every time, chat. I swear, I'm not even player one. Why is he targeting me? Does he target other casts for more often than others? We're learning new things about this character. I feel like I get hated on him but by him like way too often for it to be a coincidence. If so, that is some of the worst RNG I've ever seen. Like actually phenomenally terrible. Little free strap down. That was pretty clean. Oh, you're ultra dead. Hello, person that shouldn't be following me. Get out of my face. Pop some boxes. Thank you. Vice time. 
like the blue matches the character. I have a 99% chance of hitting that special. That's kind of gross. So you can kill with normal heavy heavy with the vice. That's interesting. I don't even have the special. Thanks, small ATP differences. Almost combo kill with just heavies. Okay. Nice. Right, so now I want to see. I want to have the vice out as much as possible. That second form I don't even think is hittable with Vite still, even with 60 hit. That form is like annoyingly good at dodging special. But the third form, I'm kind of curious how much it evens out. I guess also in a weird way, even though I'm not using charged Vulcans, I'm probably going to lose more money in this run just because I will probably be forced to try mate at some point. Where all it takes is falls doing one goofy pattern with uh, the ring around the rosy face and that wastes so much time. Nice, nice. Good job, team. Get him under control. Oh, with the parameter. So I gotta start moving up a bit. I think we missed a couple, so I'm gonna keep shooting. Yeah. Team's got that one, so it should be, be probably like one or two here. I could even preemptive fire if I could get lucky. Close. Alright, so let's see what my accuracy is with the 60 hit vice with red ring on this phase. I'm curious how it'll change each phase. So I, I can't even get a consistent hit with a 60 hit vice. That's crazy. So I put the threshold to 79, so I know I have below 80% chance of hitting it. So just in case that's something that's messing with the recommendation, I have to move that. Ooh, I didn't get a hit there. Unfortunate. That, however, is kind of fortunate. Getting trolled here by the bad pattern. Alright, so I switch into the vice. I want to see if it balances out, because as you saw before, I couldn't hit it with special. So is this third form evasion actually so much less? Let's see. Survey says. Ninety-two percent. Interesting. Oh, that went so fast. Thank you, ninety-two percent. Huh. Today I learned. So yeah, that third form of evasion is much lower than the others. The fact that it's like a whole 12 plus percent difference, that's kind of silly. On the plus side, it makes killing that boss more consistent. So I probably need at least like, what, a 65 Vulcan to get that guaranteed? Thing. Poor Hugh cast. If only he had more hit. So anyway, chat, I'm going to do one last one, and I think we're going to wrap up here. Okay, there we go.
right, so let's do a quick check here. No worries. Glad you had a good time, Mass Cats. I was looking to see, unfortunately it got stuck on the loading page. So August Atrocity 1's at 8312. Seabut and Tower. Seabet's at 747. Tower's at 589. So we might end up doing more Tower in the future. I, I don't mind that run. If there was ever a time I was going to do Tower, it would have been there. Let's do the final run. So perhaps maybe on Wednesday we'll assist the, the runs a bit more. But I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, we did like 4 or 5 tower today. That's like a good hour towards the grind. Plus we did all those other runs the other day, which was like 3 hours of grind, I think. Given that we don't play for super long amounts of time, that is a pretty large percentage of our playtime. Dealt with them... Leave Mopina. Goodbye, the enemies. Put a little happy freeze trap down. Hot boxes. Yeah, I'm really liking the Cell and K combat. This is definitely the, the highlight item for me so far of the event. Getting my own 30 hit LNK has opened up the Hue cast. The difference between him actually being able to use it or not against Falls. And even I can use it on Dragon without needing the sword. Here, yeah, um, goodbye. <laughs> I like that if every single hit of his crits, he can one-shot the Sil Dragon when it wakes up. And it already died. Back up the glitch. Good job. Actually, let me walk back into camera view. I'll just guess. I'm probably going to be a bit off on this one, because I couldn't see where I was angled. Too far off. I've done worse. Good old three. This might be too close. Yeah, it was too close. Damn. Line. There we go. Just using a little bit of weed whacking on him. Chat should have me covered here, hopefully. There we go. <laughs> I can just make my way through this room. We're good. Set that room up a little bit. Team's doing a good job here. I'm only a little behind the team. In like three seconds. Probably book it. One, two, three. Oh, welcome, Chris. Any luck with the runs question? Obligatory. Uh, we got another V502 today. So far, a couple of, like, crappy can of rouges, I guess. I think, uh, Imperimeter struck out with a little bit better one. I was going to say, Chris, I was going to stop streaming, but if you would like to do some runs, I will extend the stream for you. I know you're looking forward to doing some of these.
Okay, I think before I made the mistake of holding the direction when the camera flips here, but I let go of the controller. I should be in the corner, right? No, I got stuck. Yeah, there's something about, like, if I'm holding a direction, sometimes I'll get, like, wedged into things when that camera switch occurs. But I think I should just learn to not touch anything. Three, five. Otherwise, hope you're feeling better today, Chris. I know you were kind of recovering over the week. I was gonna say, Chris wants red ring and Parameter wants red ring. Together combined, somebody will get a red ring. So we'll get Red Ring and Whoopie Me. Oh, Bronze Badge dropped. I'm not going back for it, though. There we go. I was going to say, if you want in, Chris, I'll do two. That'll be my limit, though. Let's do Twin Blaze here, I think. There we go. Parameter convinced getting a zero zero. I mean, wouldn't that also potentially sell for more because it's so rare? Ooh, we bullied that boss. A sweet mercy, it actually did something other than missile me. trapped down. Maybe they'll fight each other to the death with Zalor. One will never know. Ooh. That was unlucky. They moved a bit weird. So close. Away from me, other Arlen. Photon drop, nice. Just a little bit. Image numbers, please. And down another free. Unfortunately, I don't actually have to move here. Just wanted to show something. I just say that before I stop moving. So normally, if you have a dark flow and you need to get low on health, you just gear a soul here. If somebody 
it intentionally or unintentionally heals you. It's not a big deal. It's not like episode four where staying behind like completely ruins the run. Which, by the way, please fix that, Avinia. Please fix episode four. Is that boss. a monolith? Please stop letting people despawn out of that boss. It's nonsense. But anyway. Mini game failed. I took a hit. Bazooka. I guess one way to try to target them with normals. You. We're gonna show, I guess, Chris for the first time. I'm using a 60 hit vice on a red ring. You cast. That damage though. Um, goodbye. Let's pop in the LNK. My mouse in a second. There we go. Come on, stay still. Perish. And then Chris can see the accuracy of the Hugh cast on the third special. I'm surprised it worked out to exactly 11. It's kind of funny with the boss's evasion. Normally it's very high. For heavy hits, I'm sure it added like 30 bazillion percent. Here we go. Ooh, I died with health, you cheater. Did you see that, chat? I died with Daimei. That was so BS. That was actually BS. <laughs> You can even screenshot that. I died with 500. What nonsense. I got cheated, chat. Actually cheated. Check your head. Was that like a frame one heal? What was that? So sad. I know. Oh, I'm going down for the cause. Rest in peace, me. I, I know, so, someone should definitely at least screenshot that, if not clip it, because honestly, dying with 500 health is absurd. Come on, game. I, I definitely healed. It even made the sound effect consume my item. Died anyway. Silliness. Oh, sorry to hear that, Hulk. You hopefully you get some rest. Elk leaves opening up a, so a spot. Chris, we're gonna do two runs. You can bring in whoever you want. We're gonna get this character to 182. This is like the end of the game song. I'm like, why are we hearing sound effects? So Chris is here. The rocks bot has loaded in. I'm gonna go ahead and join the game. If you remember, if you get like the true ending, I think it's like the runes activating. 
I don't know why they're in the official song, though. Yeah, this is her waking up after the runes are used. Why is that in the song? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get out of the true ending. Move forward. <laughs> Music like the roar of the dragon. That's true. Yeah, what? Well, I don't really want to listen to the true ending of the game again. Oh, and then the YouTube froze. 10 out of 10 YouTube. Did it, YouTube. You're the best. Okay. I think we're out of the vocal. The soul ending. Do we just need one more player? Then we'll get started. Okay. So I think I need to use a trimate there, I guess. But yeah, I, I definitely died with 500 health. The screen went red with HP. Any takers for the final slot? Okay, I'm guessing nobody's hopping in. I don't hear anything. I guess. Yeah. I don't want to wait super, super long. You could probably hop in for the last one if you want minus X. Don't worry, mass cats. Enjoy your dinner. Damn, yeah, it's just so dumb, chat. I love it so much. Up a few more confused traps. Maybe we'll get a nice skill out of it. So we finally entered into the last hour of the soundtrack. The eight hour soundtrack, I would like to say. We got there. Even though I had to skip part of the true ending. Save that for later. I still don't understand why that's in the official soundtrack. That's fun. I guess they really wanted you to relive the moment of collecting all the stars. Out of here, random enemies. I will for Bart versus Space Mutants. I don't think so on that one, chat. Oh, you don't have to heal me. Don't worry about it. I I'm gonna be drained to zero because I'm gonna fight the Lily anyway. If we could get the glitch. Come on, Sil Dragon. I believe in you dying nearly instantly. Almost got it? It's like a little slow. Uh, so you need to see my head in the cutscene. There I am. Okay. <laughs> Just playing a little peekaboo. I'm trying to line up with the warp. Is that right? Oh, no, it's not. I overshot. Close. Maybe one day. We'll land exactly in it. We'll practice the... Ex we'll, we'll, like, measure exactly where I need to be and how hard I should angle the controller. Yeah, look at that time save. By the time they get here, the slime's already barely spawned. I don't know if I can slime dupe him with where he ended. I'm gonna try. Hopefully he comes over here. Ah, right, he did. Good. Otherwise, that would have been a big waste of time. Oh well. 
Okay, here's where we hope somebody is helping with this room, or I'm gonna be sad. Okay, that's good. The pause trick through this. Did you get there? See that? We're assisting in different ways. <laughs> And we're moving on. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Long slimes. Give us some good badges or something. Slowly make making my way forward. No badges. That's a shame. Bell pipe up. Take a safety try made. I'm gonna hold down into the right. I want to see if because I let go before the cutscene if this now works as intended. Where does this put me? Yes. So I, I have to let go before the cutscene. I guess to answer that question. Because that time it put me exactly where I wanted to be. Whatever. Well, I'm gonna have the first character I've ever had with more than 1600 attack. So this time I'll actually have a proper setup. By the time I get here, just wait a second. Down, walk away. Blow him up. Have it's in a red. Alright, so want him to leap at me. Please leap at me. Thank you. Good enough. <laughs> I'll take that any day. Um... Gonna make sure the brand's done. Sure did. Oh, they got hit backwards. That's awkward. Well, I tried. Alright, so it's it's all down to Chris. No pressure, Chris, but you gotta stun luck. <laughs> I can only twin blaze. I can't do anything else. So if you stop it on at least the second monitor, that's fine. Yeah, we're down a player, so we don't have anybody that can assist you on the other side, sadly. Nice, you stopped it on the second. Perfect. I'll help you with the third. That was a lot of damage we just did. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Is there we missed a monitor? That was pretty good. I mean, you can't do anything. You're, you're, you're on the wrong side. We're missing a player. Like, what are we really going to do to slow it down other than win Blaze, honestly? This boss made a poor choice. GG. Misaligned. Let him walk in the corner. 
I tried. Use trap. Let's see. Red. That waited for me. Thank you. Ooh, panic heal. Something went wrong there. That's fine. Confuse trap that. Kill a couple of these while I'm waiting. Not like I could do anything anyway. There we go. See that? I even got some Arlen's mostly killed. At least if I mess up, I just get extra kills. <laughs> just all I view it as. Like, okay. I'm waiting anyway. Might as well kill something. Bronze bat. Freeze trap into freeze trap. Definitely gonna confuse them now. Maybe we'll get a silly kill as we walk away. Nah, they walk they walk too far apart. Some invincibility, so I can afford to stand still for a bit. Let's continue with our clear. So we have three people, which is kind of a weird number. So it's not going to be two full clears. But if we are not careful, we're going to be at the wrong spot. That miss. Complete. My arm went right past it, but it didn't auto aim. That's so sad. I controlled myself. Good enough. There we go. Nice and simple. Stay still, stay still, stay still. Damn. They're kind of low on healing. Not great. I've just stopped shop later. Please don't target me. Yeah, downside. If falls just kind of messes around like that, there's, it's just going to blow through my healing. Got double throws. That's unlucky. Guy after this. Damn. Could have died otherwise. Uh, I'm gonna stall. Making sure you get that XP. Well, 26, pretty solid for three people. Especially with how unlucky that falls pattern was, I'll take that. That probably would have been like a 12 
15 otherwise. If we had gotten another short cycle in that, it probably would have been a little shy of a uh, sub 12. Now I definitely need to restock. I have one die made, four try mates left. Tell pipe since we're here. Check the weapon store. Anything fun? Oh, weapon store sucks. We're at the point where technically things like charge Vulcans could appear in theory in the bank. Does it happen? Not usually for me. I think I've seen it once. Especially with the hit percentage. Oops, one too many mashes. Okay, one last run, then the stream is officially over. Last run luck gonna come in. Nice. Welcome remote battery. More than welcome to join. Oh, I'm just watching in bed. The bait. I guess for that we do have an open slot. If you wanna come in minus X, you're more than welcome. Sort my image. Well, that says drop. I was like, that scared me. I just wanna, just wanna sword. Don't wanna drop. There we go. Okay. <laughs> or a parameter. I mean, it can take a while. Eventually, you'll hit the 200 average runs. We're burning through quite a few of them at the moment. We do have enhanced rare rate. Still not great odds. But we'll see what we can do. I'm just excited to level this character. I'm not looking for items. If I happen to get him, I get him. I'm just like, ooh, I wanna get that 1600 ATP. Practice some runs in single player. I mean, we already saw before that he's able to basically do whatever he wants in tower. He's still not max ATP. He's still not max level. The fact that he's able to do that is pretty silly. Like, imagine if the Hugh Castile just had, like, 100 more ATP. If she could be even, like, remotely... Not, not his 1650. Like, definitely the Hugh Cast should have it. But imagine if she had, like, 1450 or something insane. Or even, like, 1480. Her last swan damage would have been, like, off the charts. I almost died at the dragon sitting on me. That was close. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's the real killer of me. When I'm not paying attention in spinner room, dragon falling asleep on me. There we go. And it's dead. Congratulations. Nice glitch. Nice shot. Ooh, wow, that one was really off. Should have lined up with the camera. Oh boy, I missed the moon atomizer.
three, slime dip in time. Where's the slime? What? What? Did it just teleport or was it just me? Didn't it say he was in the corner there? Minimap, did you just lie to me? What was that? Minimap, please. It wasn't just me, right? Like, he went in the upper... He went in this corner. His slime graphic went through there, but then, like... Whatever. Unless I just, like, barely missed him visually. Put a happy little freeze trap down. Just with that room, we're gonna keep running. Yeah, like, I saw his slime trail, but it was, like, translucent. It was weird. I don't know if he, like, accidentally somehow went out of bounds. I don't know what happened there. Or something didn't load on him properly. I missed the slime. Rip. I'm not going back. If it dies, it dies. If it lives, it lives. not move here. Now I'm gonna move. So I tried preemptively running before, but it seems to just get me stuck on the sides. Yeah, like, see, that put me exactly where I wanted to be. So there must be something weird about the transition where if you move forward and then do the diagonal, it, like, sometimes remembers that you shouldn't be facing that way, and sometimes it doesn't. Where if I just choose not to do anything, it seems to consistently put me in the middle. Weirdness chat. Cutscene jank with camera and movement. Because if, like, I'm holding a direction there, like, let's say I'm holding down and right, right as the cutscene starts, I end up going down and left, I think. For some reason. Just for chat clarity. Like, it does not behave the way you think it should. So when I'm trying to hold back and right to end up roughly in the center of the map from where I'm sitting, it just sometimes it behaves, sometimes it doesn't. I'll just wait here. Ooh, it got frozen really early. That's not good. I don't know if somebody shot it or something. Oh, I'm gonna take a lot of damage now. This sucks. Goodbye, my try mate. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't place it early, but I think I heard a gunshot. Nice and simple cleanup. Whatever. Check out me on that one. <laughs> he just re he just went backwards at the worst time. Slow it down a little. Getting hit by a crazy amount of Gafoes right now. There we go.
Ooh, it went for heal. Thank you. Blessed be the RNG. Nice, got my level up. Photon drop, gotta go back for it. Um, and now at 1604 ATP chat. acted a bit weird, but I dodged it. I was gonna say, you want to target me with target me with spells? You <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Hughcast doesn't have time for your nonsense. Listen, Hughcast is like, we're on a tight schedule. We gotta go to sleep. Like, listen, you don't understand. You you are going to get deleted. Here, walk forward, up here. Oh, that other safe. Oh, that freeze trap saved me so hard. I'm glad I put that one there. Did we just find the mini game music after as many hours of soundtrack? Truly an appropriate theme to go to Falls' demise. I'm gonna leave the bronze badge. I'm not going back for it. If it was gold, I would have left. It's saving all the best songs for last. At least it's easy enough to identify the mini games. Like, there's no doubt in my mind this is where it's played. Love the random sound effects. It's all part of the music. It's the dragon roar. It's the random. Uh, I don't even remember what the mini games were in 5. I'm gonna be real with you. Other than the war game. Not my favorite. I'm assuming it had a cup game. Every Suicide has a cup game. But honestly, I just don't remember them compared to the other ones. I feel like the war battles took up like 40% of the gameplay. It came to the mini games, unfortunately. It's a little too long for me. Not to mention the nonsense of the infinite combat loop. heal during the cutscene. Take that, Falls. I don't have to worry about anything now. Checkmate. That is the downside about the vice. I do, even though it was great hit, I am really scared to use it against Falls a lot of the time. Just due to the, the set damage being so high and it being somewhat out of my control if it hits me. cycle. Nice. Nice. Didn't short cycle. There we go. That was a clean run. Goodbye, Falls. Nice little wrap up to the stream. <laughs> Dead already? Yeah, we're going on almost seven hours recorded. Say GG. Sub 12 minutes. Sadly, no red ring though. Let's open some boxes. If there's any consolation prizes. I got something. Is that a Gazan level 22? Is that what it dropped for me? Seriously? Why could the boss drop text? Why? 
Honest question, chat. Why? Please remove this, if any. <laughs> I don't... It doesn't need to be a rare, but, like, can, can it not be techniques, please? So, anyway, with the end of the week here, let's see how we did. I know. it. Oh, that's a lot of money. I mean, I'm gonna put that away. I did use a lot of money on the other character. So if we were to put away literally everything here... What are we doing with our... Lines. 93 defense, 84 power, back up to 60 photon drops. Uh, that was, I think it went up from 48 to 60 in two days, which is very silly. Uh, almost at 99 silver badges. And keep in mind, there's other characters I didn't put them away on still. So looking like we're already going to equal the amount of other things that I have. Yeah, it was a lot of PDs. Me now yesterday and today. So I think I have a total of 90 gold badges already. So maybe I don't need to convert all of them. So we might hold off on converting a lot of our silvers, but obviously we still have more days to go. Like we're not very far in the event. It's not even September. So we potentially will end up with some nice things. I'm gonna stock here. garbage in the shop as usual but anyway uh wow so 1604 i'm definitely feeling his power and the fact that i still haven't hit the cap is crazy to me why the other hunters were not this high atp is like beyond me hum humor got robbed hugh Casil got robbed somebody said oh oh did we s rank oh man look at that chat we didn't disappoint yeah, 1604 base. And we got S rank. That's how good that run was. He's finally proud. Yeah. There we go. A good note to end on. We finally got S rank at a high level play. <laughs> While killing like a million things. And we still got sub 12 despite all of that. So let's chat a little bit. Let's make that video a nice solid 7 hours. So how do we feel the runs went overall? Well, I ended up getting two V502s across a couple days. So we're now at, I think, what is it? Three V501s and three V502s. So that definitely helps a little bit with my character swapping. Um, in terms of Can of Rouges, I got a bad one. I guess if I make another Ranger, at least it's kind of a holdover prize. But man, I, just one day, Chad. I just want the Cannon Rouge to just, just be something above 20. Like, any stat other than native, maybe, just put it at, like, 40. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even have to be hit. It, it could even be dark. <laughs> maybe I'd find a use for it. But yeah, it's just kind of it's just kind of sad, Chad. One day, we we're going to get a better Cannon Rouge. However, we did get a lot of Cannon Rouges in general today. So that kind of broke a streak of just not receiving anything. But I think, chat, other than that, we're going to continue to do hunts for the common power, the common three and the power six. Because most people are looking for things like the Heaven Striker, Cannon Rouge, etc. So we're going to continue to do that and I guess see if we can roll a little better. But otherwise, expect a few more tower runs in the future. I think with our character power as it is now, I think I genuinely don't really care about the tower quest in terms of difficulty. So if there's people that want to potentially grind out for another V502, uh, we're probably going to have that in the future. I might still do some blue seabed, but honestly, like, I, as I said before, if, like, doing 18 quests, not receiving, like, a single rare is, like, insane to me. I don't feel like doing them anymore. Granted, some of them were before they flipped the uh, badge conversion thing, so maybe some of my Zambas and Yunchangs got eaten by that change. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of makes me not want to do the run. Like, I'll still do it if chat really needs seabed for something, but right now I'm like, eh, it's just okay. It's definitely not going to match, like, any of the other runs, to be honest, like crater, desert, mines, and forests in particular. But anyway, chat, that's enough for me. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you again for watching, and hope to see you again in the next part.